I don't care what y'all think. If you would ever fuck you think you are, and until we own some shit, I'ma call it what like it is. How you gonna be a man and we starving? Go ahead. You know? And we every you walk by five different houses, ain't a man in either one of them motherfuckers. Go ahead. How we gonna be a man? How we gonna be African Americans? Go ahead. We out here dying. We thugs and we niggas until we set this shit right. Trust me when I tell you that shit. Family, 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 you already know what it is. This is the Black Alpha Network, foundational Black American excellence at its best, certified Black society in the house, and we G-checking all tether hairlines, all Fleedman faux heads. If you got one, you better get out the building because we about to do some real, real regulating. So if you got one of those, or if you got one of these, you better hit the door. If you got one of these and you got one of these, then your ass better hit the door. We know a tether when we see one. We know an op when we see one. And anytime they come around certified foundational black American society, we running them out. You're not going to go above us. You're not going to undercut us. You're not going to disrespect us. So you can take your Fleedman forehead. You can take your tether hairline. Yes, y'all, that's real. That is real. No, I didn't make that up. That is not Photoshop, y'all. And they can hit the door because foundational black Americans are in the house. Roll call time, family. Where are you at right now? I need to see the whole family. I need to let everybody know that we are in the building and I need you to go ahead right along with me, family, so we can let the whole goddamn world know that this is certified all the time. Foundational black Americans are in the building, in the place. And like I always say, Ball is going to ball and haters going to hate. That is the bottom line. I hope y'all ready for this one. I hope y'all ready. This episode right here is going to be one above everything. Smash that like button. Let's go ahead and go to work, y'all. This is what it is. It's foundational black American time, and they can't do a damn thing about it. Is the East Coast in the house? Is the West Coast in the house? Is the Midwest in the house? Is the South in the house? I got a good feeling. Damn right, we are. Let's go to work, y'all. Dogs for life. Yes, indeed. What it do? Black Alpha Network. How y'all living, family? How y'all living? Let me know something. What we got, man? I got to see it. I got to see who's all in the place right now. Let's see who's in the place. Washington, D.C., Virginia, Toledo, Ohio, 419. You already know. Tampa Bay. Yes, indeed. I see Orlando in the building. St. Louis, you here? I'm here with you. Philadelphia, I'm here with you. The whole East Coast, the whole West Coast. Washington, D.C., I'm going to see y'all come June. Yes, indeed, y'all. Yes, indeed. Let's go. Jacksonville, Duval, West Coast, all in the building. New Jersey. Florida in the house. I already know Louisville, Kentucky is in the house, home of the great Muhammad Ali. Yes, indeed. Right up the street from my people in Springfield. All the way, Atlanta, ATL. Let's go. I got them all in the place, man. What they going to do, y'all? What they going to do when you put some certified, foundational black Americans in the same damn place at the same damn time when it's our generation and it's our season? They ain't got nothing. Dogs for life. Before we go any further, y'all, I want to go ahead and say rest in peace right here to my dog, Hunter. Rest in peace, Hunter, right here. And this is my dog, Bobby Lee Swagger, okay? Dogs for life, y'all. Rest in peace, Hunter. Dogs for life, man. This is what we're doing, man. We ride together. Foundational black Americans, man. Y'all already know how we do it, man. We mob. We go. We don't have no backstabbing culture. We don't sell each other out. We don't sneak this. We come at people directly, and then they run out the building. We come at people straightforward, and then they run out that building. But we're always right here, and we always remain. So with that said, family, good to see you. Glad everybody's here. Hope you're having a beautiful Tuesday. I cannot wait to see the whole family, man. This is what we do. Certified Foundational Black Americans. Y'all know over here on the Black Alpha Network, y'all know the intros is fire. Y'all know we start off booming real heavy, real thick, man. So y'all know how we do, man. We're going to represent it to the fullest, man. I just love y'all. I love y'all. Thank you, Iron Wheel. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. 
Y'all know I'm a certified foundational black American, okay? I'm in the great state of Georgia, all right? And I have my dogs buried right in the backyard, all right? This is our home, family. And guess what? My grandparents are buried in Ohio, okay? All of our family members are buried right in the States. If you want to go see the gravesite of one of your ancestors, you right here, right? You ain't got to fly to Africa. No, uh-uh. You ain't got to go nowhere. You ain't got to go south of the border, north of the border. If you want to see the grand, um, you want to see the gravesite of a grandparent, a great grandparent, a great, 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 great grandparent. You know you got to stay here. We ain't got to hop on no planes to go see where our family is. Appreciate the RIPs of my dog hunter. Hunter never knew that. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all with a passion, man. Yes, thank you very much. I got my other dog swaggering here. So y'all hear the barking and all that? That's what it is, man. Yes, that is what it is. But y'all know, if you want to go see anything that is important to you, anything that represents you, anything that represents your family, you do not have to hop on a plane to go do that. All you do is you stay right here at home. And that's what Foundational Black America has been doing. We stay right here at home. If you want to go see a loved one who's alive, pick up the phone, call them, and go travel to them. If you want to go see one who's transitioned, you can go to wherever the resting place is. But guarantee, wherever you go, you know that you're going to be amongst family. So all these people trying to tell us to go here, run there, hop over that, hop over this, it is not going to happen, family. What we are going to do is we're going to represent to the fullest, and we're going to regulate everybody. Tethers have been going down. One by one, we've been running tethers completely out the paint. They cannot deal with us on this level, y'all. Why is that? Because foundational black Americans are doing our thing. We're doing our thing for real, for real. I want to show y'all this real quick, though, since we're talking about it. That right there is them, y'all. That is not us. That is not us. That is them. That is what they do, okay? So if that applies to you, then you know what you can do, all right? If that applies to you, you know you can go ahead and bounce. All them Fleetman foreheads and them tether hairlines, y'all, that applies to them. They fled, okay? What I told Carnell West family, I say, we did not fly here. We reside here, all right? We ain't never flew here. We grew here. We ain't come here. We're from here. And when you start talking about being in this place, in this land, you got to address foundational black Americans first and foremost. We come before everybody. And don't let nobody tell you different. This is the new wave, y'all. And it's based on our own ethnicity. It's based on our own generosity towards our own lineage. And we represent it to the maximum right now. This is what it is. Anybody who's not feeling it, that red, white, and blue, that's the foundational black American flag. Take yourself elsewhere because you're not going to get the foundationals to become immigrants. It can't happen. It can't happen. It won't happen. Foundational black Americans are exactly what we've always been. That is the best. That is the greatest of all time. And we're going to continue to be the best and the greatest of all time. So if you want to represent to the fullest today, y'all, you want to break everything down and start doing some G checking. Let's go because we're taking out the trash. Yeah, we've been doing it that in this generation if you want to get to the money you want to get to the reparations you want to get to what belongs to you the first thing you have to do is you got to start taking out some trash and that's what we've been doing whether that's hip-hop and all these folks running around here saying that they co-created hip-hop we're gonna take out the trash on them whether that is the political world we're gonna take out the trash on them whether that is the social world somebody who just came here last night we are going to take out the trash on them everybody so i want you to get your bags i don't know what trash day it is where you're from in your neighborhood but for foundational black americans it's taking out the trash every goddamn day and all these tethers they ask us is about to be on that corner because this is what we're doing so you know it wouldn't be right fam if i sat here and said where are my dogs at and i didn't send this real ultra big certified salute to the dog dmx himself yes indeed rest in peace dmx rest in peace dmx rest in peace dmx he just transitioned, what, I want to say two years ago? Is it two years ago, three years ago? And the day just passed. I wasn't on live. So I told myself, I said, I am going to send the biggest shout out to the dog DMX, man. So rest in peace to DMX, y'all. We're going to keep that same certified foundational black American energy when we start doing this regulating today. And when we do this regulating today, we're going to take it into the next one, into the next one. And it will not stop. It does not stop because we will never bow down to anybody. Certified salute to the whole family, to the whole team you know what i mean let's go to work family first off before we go any further after i already done lit it up now for the first 10 minutes we done already told everybody that uh buster without the rhymes busted rhymes how does that look i thought foundationals didn't have a culture he was running around here saying we ain't got no culture now he ain't got no tour so if you ain't got no tour and we got the culture then what it is it's all bad everybody's seen that buster rhymes little tour what happened to his tour family 
There ain't one because they couldn't get it off the ground. T tickets don't went down. No, canceled it. So now what he doing, y'all? He's trying to tether on to Missy Elliott and Sierra. So if I'm not mistaken, that looks like Buster Rhymes has been officially and certified G check by foundational black Americans. Yeah, they thought it was real cool. He thought he was going to go out there and do that Fat Joe stuff. Y'all notice all these 50-50 hip-hop people? Y'all notice they ain't heavy? Y'all notice they ain't around? Y'all notice they falling off real quick, real bad? They thought that they was going to come around here and disrespect us. They thought they was going to come around here and say all those things about us. And what ended up happening, y'all? What ended up happening is that we, foundational black Americans, said, we're going to show you who the culture. We're going to show you who runs and owns hip-hop. We're going to show you who the originators are. We gonna show you who the foundation is. And now they ain't got nowhere to go. Buster Rhymes done crashed out. Now you see Fat Joe, he done did a whole pivot. He talking about Haiti. He talking about Haiti all of a sudden. I thought it was 50-50. I thought it was black and Latino. No, 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 no. No, you said it was 50-50. Now all of a sudden you ain't talking on our issues no more. You thought you was gonna get that democratic check. Ain't happening. Buster Rhymes, he thought he was going to go on this world tour. And I'm going to show y'all some receipts, too. He thought he was going on a world tour and was going to get all this money. Nope. Fat Joe? Nope. All of these colognes and all these little bums that think that they represent hip-hop, but really they just stole that from us. We're putting all the thieves on the line, all the tethers on the line, all the fleers are on the line, and we brushing them all out. We got the mop. We got the dustpan. We got the broom. And most importantly, fam, we got the trash bag, taking out the trash tether edition. Family, I got to send a big certified salute to everybody. And I'm talking about the biggest certified salute right now because I know y'all ready. I know y'all ready. Who ready? Who ready? Let's go. Let's go. First off, let me send a massive big certified salute to my big brother, Tariq Nasheed. Thank you so much for the opportunity, my brother. Certified salute. That's a real one right there. Who's ready? For the second annual Rally for Reparations Juneteenth celebration. Who ready for it? I know y'all are. And I can't wait to see every single one of y'all in Washington, D.C. And I can't wait to give you daps and hugs and pounds. I cannot wait because when it came up, who you guys wanted to hear? It was so many people that said Black Alpha. So many people. I seen every single one of y'all. I see and I hear everything. I see and I hear everything, you guys. So I appreciate that so much. I got to tell you right now, I love you with a passion, like I say on every single episode, and I can't go no further unless I sit here and tell you right here, right now. Thank you so much, you guys. And I'm telling you, all of the brothers and sisters involved, all the foundational black Americans, we are going to take over not just D.C., but the whole country. We're going to let everybody know that we run it. We're going to let everybody know we're not going anywhere, and everyone else has to bow down. This is history in the making. History in the making. Foundational Black American Rally for Reparations Juneteenth celebration hosted by the great Tariq Nasheed with speakers. Riza Islam, certified salute. Vicky Dillard, certified salute. My good brother, Marcel Dixon, certified salute. My vanguard, good brother, Afro Elite. Yes, indeed, certified salute. Another one to the great Dr. Randy Short. And straight up salute to Dr. Maya. I appreciate all of you guys. I cannot wait to see you. Thank you so much, family. I appreciate the congratulations. Everybody's been writing me saying, man, I cannot wait. Y'all know I'm going to get on that stage, turn all the way up. They're going to feel the heat on the other side of the country. But most importantly, they're going to feel it right there in D.C y'all because we are going to do a foundational black american take over black alpha network will be live on stage and i will be sharing the stage with all of you guys all of you i'm going to be there and i'm going to be speaking on behalf of every last one of you so it is a family affair so i want everybody i want to see you there i want you to bring your mamas bring your daddies your aunts your uncles your cousins bring your children this is a family affair this is a family event because we're all family yes we are the foundational black American family tree. We are building, we working, we shining, we grinding. We are untouchable, unbreakable, unmatched, and stronger than ever. So I want to see everybody there bring the whole family because it's going to be a great, great, great time. Something that will live in the vows of history forever. They're going to look back on that rally in the year 2070, all right? And they're going to say, we either got reparations because of them or we are on the path to taking these reparations and taking it to another level because of them. Everybody's going to look back on our generation. 
And they're going to say, how did we get where we are? The same way we look back on the 60s, the same way we look back on the 30s, same way we look back on the 90s. They're going to look back at us and they're going to see everybody. They're going to see every last one of you guys. And they're going to understand that we were the ones who either cashed it in or we were the ones who took it to the bank. But nothing less is acceptable. Either way, it ends with dollar dollar bills, y'all. And them dollar bills is coming to us. So thank you guys very, 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 very much. Certified salute, man. I appreciate you and I love you with a passion. Thanks for the love and support, man. You know it, you know it, you know it, you know it. When you put a bunch Bunch of foundational black Americans together in the same place at the same time, you get these results, man. And these results are going to be epic, monumental. And the same way that that, that is going to be epic and that is going to be monumental is the same exact way this roast that we about to do is going to be epic and monumental so family what i need you to do right now is go ahead and get your popcorn ready we already got almost 400 people in the building in the place yes indeed i appreciate you i appreciate all y'all man all right you near dc i want to see you there i appreciate you i appreciate you family yes let's go let's go let's go i appreciate anybody that can make it man anybody that can make it Anybody that can make it, man. All right, Russell. Hey, man, I can't wait, man. I hope you're there. I hope God get the chance to meet you. All of y'all, all of y'all. I want to meet all y'all. Let's kick it. Let's hang out. It's a family. This ain't going to be nothing but a big old FBA B1 cousins, man. Family reunion. And since we starting on the family reunion, fam, let's go ahead and start with this roast. Whose culture is it? It's foundational black American culture. Who better hit the door? All the tethers. And with that said, let's talk about this tether right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It was all good just a week ago. Uh-huh. Yes, indeed. Family, wasn't it funny how this person was running around saying all types of hateful things about foundational Black Americans? You notice that he never said these things about foundational Black Americans when, I don't know, Tupac was still around. Hmm, I wonder why. He never said those things about foundational Black Americans when DMX was in his prime. Hmm, I wonder why. You notice that all of these people waited years and years and years. They waited for a lot of folks to get older. They kind of sat out a lot of things and just said, well, we'll wait until there's another generation. And when there's another generation, that's when we're going to come out the blue. That's when we're going to start talking this 50-50 hip hop. See, they know they can't pull that game on us. Any of us who are in our 20s, late 20s, anybody of us who is in our 30s, anybody who's in their 40s, they can't pull that on us. No, they can't. And by the way, Brother Sage, yes, indeed, brother. I will see you there all day, every day. That's my brother right there. Certified salute. Y'all notice, family, that they only started saying this 50-50 hip-hop when they could say it to a bunch of younger people because they know saying it to the older generation, we was going to stop it in its tracks, right? So now what do you see? You see these people running around here talking about we co-created hip hop, but they only say that when they're talking to a bunch of young folk. Well, guess what, family? This ain't a bunch of young folks. It's going to be us who puts it into that. They's really out here on some predatory stuff. If you really want to go there, if you really want to go there, all of that co-creation of hip hop, all that is, that's predatory, y'all. That's predatory all day long. That's sitting there trying to be a predator to young folks and trying to talk to them because, you know, you can't talk to us. This right here is what started the crash out. This right here is what started the fade. This right here is what started Buster Rhymes thinking he was about to go on tour. But now his ass done got thrown on that corner. Watch. Yes, tropical people, but even here in the United States, we're the multi-culture because the U.S. ain't got no culture. They shit is all our shit. A bunch of our shit is what makes the U.S. Whatever you want to call it. We still don't know what that culture is for the U.S., but it's a mix-up of all of our cultures. And in the urban community, you know, the Latino and the West Indian has the greatest influence. And we've always had and we'll always will. And it's just been that way. So I've actually been influenced by the Latino community, which allows me to feel that much more comfortable putting my West Indian influence in my music because they made me feel that much more proud to be like, yes, yeah, tropical. Whoa, hold up, hold up, hold the hell up. I want everybody to notice. First off, notice how family, he was, uh, the, uh, the, uh, he couldn't even think about it because he know he lying. 
He know that's all cap, right? And then also notice how he immediately gave you that Caribbean connection. This is why we say they all tethers, man. This is why we're not sitting here trying to cut them up and divvy them up. Man, y'all all tethers until further notice. Because y'all notice that the Mexican and the Puerto Rican won't get along until they are anti-black. And then the Jamaican won't get along with the Puerto Rican. Hell, the Dominican and the Haitian live literally next door to each other. And the Dominicans denounce the Haitians. But you start talking about FBA, then they all get along. All tethers stick together. So foundational black Americans going to do the same damn thing. We're going to stick together. That was Mr. Caribbean, okay, Buster Rhymes, Buster without the rhymes, Busted Rhymes, and then Fat Joe. They were playing tag team. It was those two. They were the main ones talking all that, okay? It was them, y'all. So since they're the main ones talking all that nonsense, foundational black Americans going to do some regulating. He didn't stop there. Oh, no, no, no. That was just the beginning. And mind you, wasn't nobody talking about him? Wasn't nobody talking about him? We were talking about something completely different. He threw us in there and started talking about black Americans and we ain't got no culture. And mind you, y'all, when they start saying America, they're not talking about white people. OK, they never would. They know better. Tethers love the dominant society. That's not who they talking about, y'all. That's not who they talking about. Whenever they say America, they're really talking about black Americans, not Zaddy. They know better than to not talk about Zaddy. They want to come here and be next to Zaddy, which we're going to break down as well. Oh, all tethers, inside out, pillar to post. We are going to expose every aspect of tethers. And after this episode, a tether won't show their face around foundationals ever again. Proceed. The showmanship that we displayed, a lot of that shit come from dancehall culture. And, mm -hmm. and I don't think people really understand this whole hip hop shit was birthed from Jamaica. The showmanship that we displayed, a lot of that shit come from dancehall culture. And, mm -hmm. and I don't think people really understand this whole hip hop shit was birthed from Jamaica. It came from dancehall? What came from dancehall? Dancehall? Dancehall ain't come from dancehall. You were never around foundational black Americans. Okay, let's just make this clear. What y'all was in the back of the back of the back. Y'all were dressing like this was 1802. They're always 30, 40 years behind. I'm going to be real. We look at a lot of their styles, and a lot of that stuff is lame to us. Y'all notice that all these different people from all these different areas, they think that they pop in. They think they fresh, but really to us, they lame as hell. Okay? Nobody from foundational black America was ever looking at somebody from the Caribbean and said, oh, that's tight, man. Let me take that now. Oh, I want to dress like family. Okay. Today, do y'all want to walk around and dress like Jamaicans? Do y'all want to dress like they do at their little festivals and stuff? Do y'all want to do any dance hall? The men be twerking. Let man, come, man, come on now. Let's be real. Men, you ain't. Let me tell you something. Tupac wasn't gonna twerk. DMX wasn't gonna twerk. You go watch one of them carnivals or whatever. The men be out there twerking with the women. That ain't foundational, homie. You want to start talking about some of the women that be jumping up and down and they be hopping on each other and doing all that? That ain't foundational, homie. Foundational Black Americans, we weren't in there talking about right the body not up. We weren't doing none of that. That ain't foundational, homie. Foundational black Americans, we got a different creed. We are the ones who get watched. We're the ones who get copied. We're the ones who get duplicated. We don't duplicate nobody else. We don't watch and copy nobody else. Foundational black Americans, we set the trends. Get it right. Foundational black Americans do not follow nobody else. The only thing foundational black Americans do is wake up every goddamn day and set all the trends. You mean to tell me that in a world where Every single community is walking like us. They Memphis juking way to hell over in Asia right now. Come on. Not to mention, you look at some of those little pop groups over there. They look like the damn Supremes. They're literally going back into the 60s. Family, I seen a damn Asian Beyonce, Iron Lime, and I also seen an Indian Beyonce. And y'all know you got all the European and uh, wannabe Beyonce's. I seen Takeoff. I seen Offset. I seen Quavo. But guess what? They wasn't the ones from Gwinnett County in Georgia. No, 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 no. These folks was all from the Dominican Republic. There is a foundational black American everywhere, fam. They literally have, no lie, no cap. They literally have, y'all, a Tupac from Nigeria, a Tupac from Ghana. They had another Tupac from the damn Ivory Coast, places that you would never imagine. There's villages right here today where you got folks out there dancing like they are foundational black Americans. We ain't never been there. Let me tell you something. I always say this. Our culture goes further than we go. All right. There's places that we, we may never be in our lives, but I guarantee you our foundational black American culture going to be there. 
I guarantee you that. That's what happens. DMX wasn't waking up trying to be like somebody from the Caribbean. Y'all know that. I know that. We know that. Neither was Tupac Shakur. He wasn't doing that neither. So, family, where does all of this copycat stuff come from? You mean to tell me that we got receipts on receipts on receipts of all these people trying to walk like us, talk like us, but somehow Buster Rhymes and Fat Joe try to tell us that we're copying them. They trying to make the leaders the followers. They're trying to make the trendsetters the ones that follow the trends. Ain't no way in hell that ain't happening. Yes, FBA warriors stand up, certified salute. This is how you conquer all that nonsense. You just permeate FBA energy. We ain't got to do nothing. We ain't got to do nothing. All we got to do is roast, put out that FBA energy, and we put it down all the time. We squash all that nonsense. That's what it is, y'all. So with that said, look at this right here. OK, who out here trying to copy foundational black Americans? Who trying to copy foundational black Americans? Yes, you ain't lying. Michael Jackson. Oh, don't let me get me started. Oh, don't even let me get started. There's a Michael Jackson in every single continent. Every week they're trying to say it's a new Michael Jackson. Everywhere you go, they're trying to say, well, Michael Jackson, a new Michael Jackson, a new Michael Jackson. Y'all notice, fam, we don't never say a new anything because we got the originals. Let me, let me say that one more time. You notice foundational black Americans. We don't be running around here talking about the new Michael Jackson. Because we got the original Michael Jackson. We don't run around here saying the new Tupac. Because we got the original Tupac. We don't have to say Diana Ross. We don't have to say Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin. We don't have to go around and make carbon copies of them. There's never no new, no two, no three, no four, no fives. Because we're satisfied with one. That's all it takes. When you have the original version, you don't have to go chasing the copy version. That's what they be doing. Speaking of copy versions, y'all thought I was playing. Y'all thought I was playing all my originals. Y'all remember MC Wharf? Tell me if you remember MC Wharf, okay? MC Wharf, that is not a foundational black. This is what you start hearing when you start listening to people like Buster without the rhymes, okay? This is the man who's talking about who came first and who did this, that, and the other thing. We ain't got none of that in our culture. That is somebody who's been watching foundational black Americans and trying to duplicate foundational black Americans. Y'all think I'm playing? Okay. Let me show y'all what it looked like when you're talking about the other side of the fence. Yeah, let's talk about MC Wharf. Tell me, family, do people want to be like foundational black Americans or are we trying to be like them? Look at this guy or whatever. This is what you get when you start hearing people talk about their copies, okay? We got the originals. They got this. Collaboration, that shit's coming soon, next right. month. So so I'm putting this shit on right now and y'all can have it in a month, you know? <gasps> Okay, so you you like a time traveler? You got it first. Yes, yes. Okay, hey, and, on, and, and then what, what's with like the chains, the, the rings? Silver, I like silver. Look at that! Look at that family. He got the chains and the silver. This is what they do. They wake up, even with they twisted, mutated ass forehead. That's like a Fleedman forehead on steroids. All right, that is a Fleedman, a Fledman, a Flipman. That's all the above. Okay, I don't even know how to classify that forehead, but whatever it is, it ain't foundational, homie. Them shades you got on, that ain't foundational, homie. Them busted ass brass wannabe rings you got, that ain't foundational, homie. And that busted ass swag you think you got is not foundational, homie. That right there is what you get when you leave our culture. That right there is what you get when you see people like Buster Rhymes. That right there is what you get when you see Tether Hip Hop. It ain't foundational, homie. I like silver, you know. You got the gold teeth though, bro. Huh? Yeah, man, yeah. It, no, this black gold. Oh, I just okay. need to get it, like, you know, tightened up and touched uh, up. You know? All right, all right. What's with the glasses? Just some simple bug glasses. They fit me well, you know? And, and then I, I don't want to be rude, but, but, but what's going on with your head, bro? Um, I, I, I mean, I was born like this, so, like. God damn. Woo, shit, terrible. Woo. I mean, you know, I make it work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the dude got the nerve to try to put in a gold grill. If you don't stop, wharf. Worf, you better take your ass back to Deep Space Nine. You better get on the Starship Enterprise, and you better go fly somewhere with Captain Kirk because it ain't going to fly around foundational black Americans. That's what I'm talking about. We are all the real versions, and they're all carbon copies of us, y'all. They're all copies. We don't get into none of that. We laugh at that. These people are no more than mere jokes to us. Every foundational black American laughs at them type of people, y'all. We laugh at them people. Them people that can't. Come on now. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. They can't stand next to us, y'all. They know they can't. They know they can't stand next to us. So you see stuff like that. They are nothing more than jokes, man. We out here laughing at these people. They are really 
busters. When we say they busters, they really busters. In the flesh, in person, you can see it, fam. This is what you see with these people. They are nothing that foundational black Americans would ever aspire to be, and they're nothing that foundational black Americans are ever looking for. That is what you see on a consistent basis with all them folks, every last one of them. You can't separate them, family. You can't separate them. Why you can't separate them? Because this is their culture. It is not foundational. It's not from the turf. It's not from the sort of predator phase. Damn, you ain't like Star Trek, Predator. That man got the whole nine, ain't he? They think that's swag. Like, real talk, y'all. They really think that's what impresses us? They really think foundational black Americans are sitting there saying, man, boy, that damn wharf right there, boy. Woo! I can't wait to be like wharf. Man, he got that style now. That's that real swag. Man, y'all better go tell somebody else. But guess what, y'all? When we start regulating the way we've been doing, they start flipping their style up. Y'all know, Buster Rhymes came out here and he started talking all that nonsense. We created the culture and we did this. Okay, but now all of a sudden, Buster Rhymes, we done G-checked him to the point, y'all, where he out here talking with a Jamaican accent now. I ain't never heard Buster Rhymes talk with a Jamaican accent. Buster Rhymes was running around here talking great English because he wants to come over here to America and get in with all the white folks and then take over hip hop. The same way that Tether wants to get dropped off in our community and try to take jobs from us is the same way that all these little low key Tethers, and they real low because they was hiding in the 90s. In the 90s, they was yo, 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 what's up, what's up? Now all of a sudden it's yo man, Bumba Claude, Roster Claude, all that, nah, 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 sit all that down. We done G-checked him to the point. Buster Rhymes thought he was up here. Buster Rhymes found out that he way down there. Buster Rhymes thought he was going to be elevated. He done found out the foundation was done regulated. And there's nothing he can do about that because we're in full control. Family, we've been delineating and separating. What I say, delineation, regulation gets you reparations. And we've been doing all three of them. That's why they can't come around. I'm not lying. Breaking news, y'all. Buster Rhymes is running around here eating all types of Jamaican food and talking in a damn Jamaican accent. We done. G check the Jamaican back in this guy. Watch this. Yo. Good morning and good afternoon and good evening and good night. In the part of the day, see, bless up on yourself. Yes, sir. All right, right now we're there for you to cost your life. See? We have curry chicken. All right, press. Excuse me. Right, so stop. Stop. No, 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 no. Family, what the hell is he doing? The man done cosplayed FBA. We done G-checked him so bad that he got to run back. That is the definition of a tether. The man is tethering. The man thought that he was going to be on some FBA energy. We got this man on a plane eating curry chicken, talking in a damn Jamaican accent. He sounds like he runs a bodega in the Bronx. This is what FBA will do to you. This is what happens when you come against FBA certified black society. You get to running back to your homeland. You get to talking like all of that. You get to bumble clotting. But guess what? You are nothing but a tether. And the dude couldn't even get the damn food right. Watch him say uh, this, uh, I mean, rice. He don't even know what he's eating because he's been over here trying to be an FBA for so damn long. All right, Bryce. Excuse me, rice and peas, and we have some butter shrimp. You get me? Curry chicken, rice and peas, and butter shrimp. I you to cost their life, private them. Them kind of thing with them. You see how well that's what it is. Right now, I'm not want to have too long, I'm not want my food get cold. I'm going to be in charge of myself. My reason, we don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a lunch dinner. Uh oh, I don't know how that got there, y'all. My, my bad. Y'all know with my videos, man, sometimes things just happen. Some, I don't even know how that got there. You know what I'm saying? It, it looked like he got some uh, curry chicken with a with a big side of butter biscuit that the dominant society been playing. I don't know how that got there, y'all. I'm saying things just happen sometimes. You know, I know there was an eclipse yesterday. It's probably messing with the satellite. You know what I'm saying? But somehow that popped in there. Let me rewind that and see if that happens again. I think that was an accident. Hold on. Let's see. That's what it is, Right now, I'm mean, not want to have too long because I don't want my food to get cold. I'm going to be in charge of myself. My reason, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be lunch, then I'm going to be breakfast. Damn, it did. Damn, I, I, guess it it I guess it was meant to be. I guess it was meant to be. I'm not Yeah. Buster without the rhymes. Man, you don't sit your ass down. 
If you don't sit your ass down, you better take them tether biscuits. I'm telling y'all, they got the Joe Law flavor. They got the curry chicken, the jerk chicken. They giving out butter biscuits in all types of ways, man. But that's what happens when you come against foundational black Americans. Y'all notice what? He's talking in a Jamaican accent. He got the Jolov and the curry chicken flavored biscuit. And he on that goddamn plane, right? And he flying right on back to Jamaica, right? Because that's about the only place where you going to see Buster without the rhymes. Because he thought he was going to go on a world tour, y'all. He really thought. I'm telling you, they really believe that we are some type of come up that they can just get to the point where they're getting buku money. He really believed that he was going to go on a world tour. Family, they was giving this man all types of backing. They was breaking him off all money. They were doing the Fat Joe investment. Think about it. Fat Joe did what? Fat Joe started getting in on the 50-50, trying to get in on the tether train. And all of a sudden, Fat Joe, who, by the way, is a D-minus rapper on his best day, who, by the way, ain't made no song that foundational black Americans really rock with without him taking things from foundational black Americans. All of a sudden, he with Kamala Harris. I seen Fat Joe at a WNBA game. He didn't even know the players. So you know there's an apparatus at play. You know there's a scheme, a hustle, a plot, and it's all meant to elevate these people. They get in all of those biscuits. I'm telling you, it could be a Joe Law biscuit. It could be a burrito biscuit, okay? It can be goat milk biscuit, wherever you come from. The biscuit of your choice, they will make sure they flavor it up if you come over here and you try to elevate above foundational black Americans. But we've been knocking them down. Y'all line them all up, we knock them down. That's what we've been doing, y'all. They've been lining them up, and we've been knocking them down, so that stuff ain't been working. And Fat Joe, you see where he's at now. And Buster Rhymes is on that plane going back to Jamaica because he thought he had a tour. Well, guess what, family? I done found out some things about some money for that tour. And what we see now, Fat Joe, Buster Rhymes, all of them, they done cost all of their handlers millions of dollars. The investment of trying to elevate above foundationals is running dry. Yes, yeah, I like that. The curry biscuit. That's what we're going to start calling it right now, family. Nacho biscuits. Curry biscuits. Y'all is off this chart. <laughs> Yes, y'all are. Yeah, that's what we're going to start saying now, family. The nacho biscuits, the curry biscuits, the goat milk biscuits, the chicken chow mein biscuits, because trust me, they like their biscuits too. All of these folks is running over here trying to get in on what we got. Cannot happen, y'all. Cannot happen. This is what they're trying to push on y'all. Yeah, hey, you ain't lying. There are over 99 flavors of tethered biscuits. You can get them all. That's what's happening. Yes. So when you seem out of nowhere... This tour that he was on, he called it the, what he called it? The Blockbuster. He called it the, that's corny. That's what I'm saying. They corny. Just like MC Wharf. MC Wharf is corny. Fat Joe is corny. All right. Talking in a Jamaican accent while you're eating your curry chicken biscuits going back to Jamaica because FBA done threw your ass on the corner. That is corny. So he really thought he was going to go on something called the Blockbuster tour. Well, the Block. Buster tour then got canceled and Busta then tried to tether on to Missy Elliott and Sierra. Family, come on, y'all. Come on, jerk biscuits. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, this is what they're doing. They're trying to jump on that immediately after his tour went down the drain. And I mean down the drain, y'all. He immediately said, I got to hop on anything that I can. And guess what, y'all? He started trying to hop on the Missy Elliott tour. Because when it fails for you in your homeland, you run over here. And now what you're seeing is that they're failing over here. So what are they doing? They're trying to run back to their homeland. I always say it, y'all. I always say it. These people are failures. The F in FLIR means failure. There's nothing else to it. These people fail in their homelands. And now these people are failing in the United States of America. That is just what it is. It does not matter where they go. It does not matter where they're at. They are going to lose. And when they lose, the first thing they try to do, y'all, is they try to hop on board and say, what can foundational black Americans help me out with? Is it a coincidence to any of y'all? Is it a coincidence to anybody that out of nowhere, y'all, this man started getting on board with Sierra and he started getting on board with Missy Elliott? It goes to show you exactly what we've been saying. When they fail, they got to go and mooch and leech off of us. Look at it right there. Fam, don't get mad at that foundational black American vernacular, okay? We say tether 
He just tethered. We say that they try to blend in, they blend. We say that they flee and they flee. You already seen he was fleeing back over to Jamaica after they fled here. That go for him and his parents. And then now we see that he's tethering into Missy Elliott's tour. Get your own tour. Get your own. How you go from a million dollar tour that they were starting, the blockbuster tour. I, I think they got the buster right. Yeah, real, real buster. All right. But how you go from that on your own tour to now you're the third wheel. Let's get it right. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Buster. All right. When was the last time someone said, hey, man, the party ain't a party unless we put on that Buster Rhymes. I ain't heard it. When was the last time someone said, hey, man, you know what I love to hear today? What? Buster Rhymes. Hey, man, you know what's been in my head all week? What's that? Buster Rhymes. Hell no. I ain't heard it. You ain't heard it. He ain't heard it. So he thought he was going to get those curry biscuits, go on a tour, and then start talking crazy about us. Let me tell you something that happened on the way to that plan. Foundational Black America said, hell no, I bet you won't. I bet you won't. I bet you will not come around here and disrespect our lineage, heritage, and culture. Not in this generation. This ain't the African-American. I tell y'all, we went from the yes, we can era to the hell to the no era. The hell to the no era. We ain't taking no shorts, no losses, and we not tolerating disrespect, especially from somebody who wouldn't be here if it wasn't for us. And then when you get here, you try to say that you created what we created and we took it from you. No, 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 no. Foundation of Black Americans, we said, okay, bet. Tell you what. Good luck with your blockbuster tour. Good luck with them tickets. Good luck with filling out a damn pizzeria because I bet you won't be able to fill that out. And then guess what happened? The tour came crashing down. Then guess what happened? He done lost his investors millions of dollars. So he said, well, what, what can I do, Bumba Claude? I'm going to go jump in on what Missy Elliott and Sierra got. Let's get it real. Missy Elliott, Missy, misdemeanor Elliott, for those who remember, okay, because we FBA, we go back, and Sierra those are the headliners to the tour. I guarantee you, Busta Rhymes will open. So how you go from a million dollar tour, where you're the headliner, to now all of a sudden, you're doing a tour, but you're the opening act. You went from headliner to opening act. Or is it that you were always an opening act? You were never hot in these streets. And really what you were was the Jamaican cosplaying tether Eminem. Let's be real. You was on that Eminem goofy stuff. You was dancing and prancing all around, real comical videos, play tough when you wanted to play. Another non-FBA, non-black in Eminem's case, same with Fat Joe. And y'all notice they all stick together and they all roll together, right? You notice that? What was Fat Joe running around? He's running around here talking about Eminem, Eminem, Eminem. Fat Joe, Eminem, and Buster Rhymes are the epitome of tether people, outsiders, ops, dominant society. You're talking about butter biscuits. From the nacho butter biscuits, you're talking about the Brussels sprouts butter biscuits, and then you're talking about the curry chicken one. And all of them add them all up. They all try to mooch off of foundational black Americans, and all of their careers are trash because we've taken out the trash and we put them on that damn corner. And we will continue to put them on that corner. So he went from the headliner all the way now to the opening act. That's what happens. We don't regulate it, y'all. I'm telling y'all, this is G-Check regulate season. Go ask Candace Owens. Go ask Roland BBB Martin. Yeah, Roland Martin right now still rolling down the block because he has been broken all the way down, broken, holding, rolling. He done been completely regulated. He can't show his face. So when you look at all these people getting broke down to those degrees, you can go ahead and now and you can add Buster without the rhymes to the equation. Look at this right here, y'all. They thought they had something. Oh, we got receipts. Oh, we got receipts. Buster Rhymes, check this out. They thought they had something, y'all. Check this out. This is on billboard.com. This ain't rinkydink.com, okay? This is billboard.com. Buster Rhymes plots blockbuster 2024 North American tour. See the dates. Look at that. They thought they, ooh, they thought they had something. They thought they done made it. They thought they done came. He thought he was going to bring the whole Jamaica with him. Y'all remember when they gave him that little award on one of those little shows that we don't even watch? Because foundational black Americans, we don't watch those little hip hop award shows because on them hip hop award shows, what do they do, y'all? They make that the tether convention and they basically give out all of our awards to a bunch of no bodies, all the Afro beats and stuff. Okay. Buster Rhymes plots Blockbuster 2004 North American tour. Damn, 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 Buster without the rhymes. But family, it gets way worse than that. Follow me now, follow me now, follow me now. Look at this right here. Look at him. He thought he was on. Look at him. He think he on, ain't 
He think he got foundational black American culture. Bet not. Bet you don't. Bet you don't. Bet you don't. Bet you don't. Look at this right here. He really believed that he had something going. Come to find out, never had it at all. Buster Rhymes is coming to a city near you next year. On Tuesday, November 28th, the rapper announced his blockbuster North American tour, which will see him making stops across the United States and Canada in March. Who told anybody that Buster Rhymes was this big of an artist? All they had to do was call up Foundation of Black Americans. We would have told you he'd never been hot. Buster Rhymes had about three or four songs that was just some goofy comedy songs, and we kept it moving. He didn't have to find out the hard way. We could have just told him, I'm telling y'all, Foundation of Black Americans can solve all this real quick. Check this out. The Trek, to support Rhymes' album of the same name, released on November 24th. By the way, Flop will begin on March 13th, okay? March 13th, family. It's April 9th, all right? It ain't happening. At the Masonic in San Francisco. He can't fill that up. The Blockbuster Tour will also make stops in Phoenix, Denver, Houston, Atlanta, Boston, Philadelphia, and more before concluding with a hometown show in Brooklyn Paramount and New York City Borough, April 21st. My brother Sage in the building. Sage, I know, and you know, and I know you'll tell everybody, wasn't nobody in Brooklyn going to go see Buster Rhymes, okay? Queen Alpha's in the building. She from Brooklyn. Queen Alpha, if you're listening, let everybody know that there wasn't nobody in Brooklyn going to go see no Buster Rhymes. So he wasn't even going to sell out in his own show. Damn shame. A special guest who has not been announced will be joining the I Know What I Want rapper on the tour selected dates. Family, 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 come on, y'all. Let's be honest. Who is this? He's, he's trying to get in. He's saying, well, uh, a special guest will be there. When you start talking about special guest, you know what that really means, y'all? That means that you can't sell it yourself. Look at this right here. Pre-sale. This is the main one. Check this out, y'all. Pre-sale tickets are available now on city card holders through Thursday, November 30th at 10 p.m. local time. Additional pre-sales will run through the rest of the week until the tickets hit general on sale Friday, December 1st at 10 a.m. local time, livenation.com. This is Live Nation. Live Nation. Y'all really put your money behind Buster Rhymes? Who the hell's idea was that? I know for a fact, y'all, there's some people who got fired ASAP, real quick, in a hurry. Yes, AEL, EJ, I think he did put out an album, if I'm not mistaken. And wasn't nobody checking for the album either. This is what I'm saying. Nobody checking for the album. Nobody checking for him. None of that stuff. Ain't nobody listening to you. What I say, ain't nobody come to see you, Buster. Hell no. But think about that, family. That right there, they had a big buildup for that listen to that build up you're talking about all the major dates y'all y'all see all my people in the building right now all my folks from Atlanta all my folks from Denver all my folks from Philly y'all heard that had y'all heard anybody saying that they were going to go see that show did anybody hear like I ain't heard none of that I ain't heard none of that y'all I ain't heard not one person running around here saying I got a great idea for Friday night what's that my idea is that we should go catch the Buster Rhyme show Buster's gonna be in town I ain't heard not one person say that. Now, mind you, they had pre-sale, pre-sale family. They did a big rollout for that, a massive rollout, and nobody was concerned. This is a million-dollar crash out, and these tethers keep crashing out. That is what we were saying. Nobody was going to come see that. So you're talking about they had pre-sales. They had every single major city, and they were going into Canada. That is not it. Nobody's going on an international tour. Nobody's watching Buster Rhymes do nothing international. It, it's just not happening, okay? You're talking about an international tour with Buster Rhymes as the headliner. He ain't even got that many songs. What's he going to really do? He can't do none of that. No. And family, they put this up right now. Billion. You're talking about, you're, you're literally talking about half a billion dollars that they was literally trying to put up for this man. Yes. And nothing happened. Here you go. Look at it right here, y'all. This right here. Tickets on sale. Buster Rhymes, tickets on sale, buy online. They had online tickets on sale, family. They had, you can go pick them up. They can drop them all. They'll drop them goddamn things out that plane he was flying on. And then guess what happened? Nobody gave a damn. Nobody went to go see it. Nobody cared. It was not of interest. 
Buster Rhymes has crashed all the way out. Yes, those curry biscuits have came all the way dry. So when you start talking about who got a culture and you start talking about foundational black Americans, mind you, you asked for this smoke. Foundational black Americans, we were doing what we always do. We was taking you for exactly what you were, just to tether an outdated old retired rapper, ain't did nothing, ain't moved nothing, ain't said nothing. Nobody was worrying about him. It was his idea to come and throw shade at foundational black Americans. It was his idea to come and start hating on us. So when foundational black Americans clap back and now your show ain't selling, now ain't nobody caring what you got going, family, what you gonna say now? What you gonna say? It ain't on us, it's on you. You ask for this smoke from foundational black Americans, so therefore you will get it. You ask, you shall receive. That is just the way the game goes. That's just the way the ball bounces. So now that you see this happening to him and everybody out here is laughing and everybody's seeing him crash out, now what happens next, family? The next thing that happens with these type of people, these folks start going on a tour with the Democrats. But guess what? The Democrats ain't accepting them either. They try to put this man on a college tour. College ain't accepting them either. Nobody wants to see him. So now, family, you know, crashed out to the point where you can't be a guest speaker. You can't be a guest anything. You can't go nowhere. Where you going to go? Ain't nobody wanting to see you at all. Foundational Black Americans has been watching this from the whole get-go. We told everybody, wasn't nobody checking for this guy. And all of a sudden, what happened, y'all? They really, in their heart of hearts, thought that they was going to put money. Fam, Foundationals had said that this guy was a low-level rapper. Nobody liked this guy. He is nothing. I mean, I can't remember anything this man has done other than ride every other rapper. Let's be real. This man done rolled every single goddamn rapper you can think of. Yes, he has. And he's been doing it for a long damn time. Long damn time. This man, do y'all know that he ended up on Young Money? The man, he was on Aftermath. I think he was rocking with Pharrell for a while. He was on Young Money. He was trying to make songs with Drake. This man was trying to get in on every single trend that he could possibly find because he was never hot like that. And this is what happens when you're not hot. When you're not hot, you start doing all types of desperate stuff like this. So look at his numbers. And then right there, you can tell that Buster without the rhymes is failing. Nobody was going to check for this guy. So now they put him on this world tour. Now, mind you, fam, that rollout, like we just said, y'all, that was a massive rollout. That was like Jay-Z was coming. That's not the Drake tour, okay? That's not Drake. That ain't J. Cole. That ain't Kendrick Lamar. That ain't none of them. This is Buster Rhymes, and you literally had that type of opening for this guy? Nah. But, family, that wasn't the first time. That wasn't the first time this happened to him. No. Who remembers a few, eh, I think it was a year ago, maybe? Might not even be a whole year ago. Y'all remember when it first started off, and they was trying to send him on a homecoming tour, and they wanted this guy to go and start rapping to a bunch of young folks? I'm telling you. They think that they're bigger than what they are because they get provided butter biscuits. All the butter biscuits in the world cannot make you hot in these FBA streets. Let me say that one more time for your mind. All the butter biscuits in the world cannot make you hot. You cannot create synthetic heat in these streets. You cannot create synthetic FBA pride. You cannot create synthetic love from our community. Y'all remember a few years ago, and I think, like I said, I think it was a year ago, they tried to send this man on over to the homecoming. Now, mind you, these young folks definitely, listen, we ain't rocking with Buster. So you know these young folks ain't rocking with him. Look what happens when they try to have this guy go do something at a homecoming. These people in the crowd, they booed. First off, before we proceed, let me go ahead, family, and show this to the whole world. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Fair use, fair use, fair use. This video is for commentary, news reporting. Fair use is for teaching and scholarship. Fair use is for research, just commentary. So fair use, fair use, fair use on all these clips and all these videos played. Look at this right here, y'all. Remember when they tried to send this man to the homecoming and the people booed? Watch this. And they tried to get him. They like, guess who's out here, y'all? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Here come Buster Rhymes. And everybody's like, what? Trophy. He 
come to see you buster that's what that video was if nobody wanted to see him was ever captured in a video that was it right there nobody was coming to see him and everybody that sat there and booed the folks looking at him like what and these is young folks so the young folks nobody looks at him as like a legend they keep talking about this legend when they're talking about that rollout they put millions of dollars behind them an international tour you're talking about going to like 30 different states you're talking about a rollout special guests and all this stuff that is not drake that is not um j cole kendrick lamar Lil wayne none of them that's buster rhymes the young folks ain't rocking with him clearly we ain't rocking with him so guess what his show got canceled and it all goes back to him talking about foundational black americans he could have did his little tether thing he could have ate his little curry chicken all right, he's a jerk chicken. He could have had all his curry jerk biscuits on that little plane. He could have started talking in a fake Jamaican accent. We would have sat back and let him do what he was doing. Foundational Black Americans, we got some bigger fish to fry than a bum rapper, right? So he came out and he started saying things like FBA ain't got no culture and y'all this, that, and the other thing. Okay, all right. Well, since he decided that's what he wanted to say about foundational Black Americans, we go ahead, we put him on our G checklist. And once you get put on the G checklist, you get G checked. What he should have been doing, y'all was worrying about that goddamn hamburger and wondering why Buster Rhymes done turned into Buster 350 pound rhymes, okay? He done turned into Buster Pork Rhymes, all right? Buster Pork Rhymes should have been worrying about Buster Pork Rhymes. He should have never mentioned certified foundational black Americans. What we do ain't none of your business, all right? That's what you should have been doing. You should have been worrying about how you look like you ate the whole damn Flipmo squad, all right? Flipmo squad was supposed to be your squad, not your dinner, not your snack, not your appetizer, all right? It looked like he done ate Spliff Star. Matter of fact, have any of y'all seen Spliff Star? I ain't seen Spliff Star in about five years. Somebody tell me what happened to Spliff Star. Sounds like Spliff Star done turn into a snack, all right? He was Spliff Snack, all right? Because he done ate the whole goddamn Flipmo squad. So quit worrying about foundational black Americans and start worrying about your high cholesterol. Quit worrying about foundational black Americans and start worrying about your love handles. Quit worrying about foundational black Americans and start worrying about why your goddamn scale cracks every time you stand on it. Buster, this is what happens when you deal with certifies. This is G check season. This is regulate season. We not playing no games with these folks. I said it last week, y'all. It's time we enjoy watching these people crash out yeah Fonnie Willis crashed out all right Candace Owens crashed out Brandon Johnson Eric Adams crashed out Roly Poly crashed out it's our job to sit back and watch these people crash out and enjoy it love it because guess what if you crashed out they'd be enjoying it when something bad happens to foundational black Americans they waving the flag they popping popcorn so it's time we start popping some popcorn because the dominant society's breaking tools every week all right the butter biscuits the joe Law biscuits the nacho biscuits are all drying up the curry ones the jerk ones all dried out so it's time the foundational black Americans we get us some clap back it looked like foundational black Americans we just need to sit on back enjoy all of these people crashing out on national TV, on the internet, I don't give a damn where it's at. Let's enjoy the show. It's a show. We're certified. They're counterfeit. We're authentic. They're artificial. We're real. They're fake. So anytime someone starts crashing out because they've been violating the code, it's our job to not only watch it happen, it's our job to enjoy it. So guess what? I'm enjoying the show. Buster Rhymes, your whole tour, all the millions of dollars and all them biscuits that Zaddy done gave to you, all your little tether friends, your tether homies, your tether family, all of y'all have crashed out right in front of foundational black Americans. And I got one thing to say to you. Ha. Now, watch this, you guys. Watch this. Next thing you know, this came out. And family, this is going to show you everything. This is a foundational black American. Whoa, let me run this back. This is right here, a Black Alpha Network exclusive, y'all. I done found out about some of the investors that he done cost money. Yeah, oh, it all come with money. Oh, it all come with money. Ain't nothing for free. Ain't nothing for free. No, no, the crashing out is good. The crashing out is good. All of these supremacists who put money in the pockets of all of these tethers, now they're losing money. All of these supremacists 
who tried to elevate all these people by giving them uh, tangibles and benefits, they're losing money. All of these tethers who are coming over here thinking that they got a shake hand deal. Y'all know what it is. They come over here and the dominant society says, act like you co-created hip hop. We'll give you some money. Act like you're a part of the black community. We'll give you some money. Go live in their communities. Go put on their hats. Go put on their shirts, their shoes. Act like you started everything. Try to steal their history. We will elevate you over foundational black Americans and we'll give you a little money as long as you play ball. So now the supremacists ain't getting their returns, no money, and all the tethers ain't getting their returns or their premiums, no money. And guess what, foundational black Americans, we better than ever. We always win and we winning right now. Look, look at this right here, family. Look at this right here. This is when the news broke about Buster without the rhymes and his tour being canceled. This shows you right here, you guys, how much money he cost them investors and how everybody is mad at him. Buster done made some enemies because he thought Zaddy was going to break him off some paper. In reality, foundational black Americans, we done fucked up all their cash flow. Checkmate. Buster Rhymes' highly anticipated blockbuster tour got canceled just one week before it was set to begin. Yes, you heard it right. right. This tour was not just another event, but a beacon of hope and excitement for many. Just when everyone was ready to groove to the beats of Booster Rhymes, the news of the cancellation came as a shock. Fans had their spirits dampened. Their enthusiasm turned into disappointment. So what led to this sudden cancellation? Let's dive into the events that unfold. It was touted to be one of the biggest events of the year. From the onset, the blockbuster tour was destined to be more than just a series of concerts. It was an embodiment of... Fair use, fair use, fair use, fair use. This is just commentary right here and news reporting. Fair use, fair use, fair use. The Buster Rhymes incredible journey in the music industry. The tour announcement came with much fanfare, sparking an electrifying wave of anticipation among fans and new forms buzzed with chatter as fans exchanged theories about the set list, the guest appearances, and the spectacle that was sure to accompany each performance. Buster Rhymes, known for his energetic and theatrical performances, had set the bar high and fans eagerly awaited the spectacle. Ticket sales soared as fans from all corners of the globe scrambled to secure their spot at what was shaping up to be a landmark event in the music. Venues were meticulously selected, each chosen for its unique ambiance and ability to cater to the larger-than-life performances Busta Rhymes is known for. Behind the scenes, the preparations were just as intense. From stage designs to sound checks, from choreography to costume fittings. Listen to that! The sound checks, the venues, the costumes, family certifies. They were putting millions of dollars into this. There was some big backers into all of this, family. They really thought they were going to roll out Buster Rhymes like he was Taylor Swift. They thought that they was going to get a lot of money in return for this. And they didn't get a damn thing. Listen to all of this. They're talking about the venues were carefully selected. All of the costumes. They were going to have one of those pyro events. They was going to have people jumping from the ceilings, popping out the floor. They thought they was going to bring in everybody. This is how out of touch the mainstream is when it comes to the black grassroots. When we say that the black grassroots runs the world, we run the world, family. And we have the power. And don't let nobody tell you we don't have the power. We have the power to bring down not just presidents and Democrats and Republican campaigns. We can bring down these billion dollar entertainment rappers, their venues and their concerts. So go ahead and add. The Buster Rhymes Blockbuster Tour concert to the list of things that foundational black Americans have destroyed. This is what we do. You get off code, we regulate. Platforms buzzed with chatter as fans exchanged theories about the set list, the guest appearances, and the spectacle that was sure to accompany each performance. Buster Rhymes, known for his energetic and theatrical performances, had set the bar high and fans eagerly awaited the spectacle. Ticket sales soared as fans from all corners of the globe scrambled to secure their spot at what was shaping up to be a landmark event in the music calendar. Venues were meticulously selected, each chosen for its unique ambiance and ability. Listen how they're lying, y'all. They said the tickets were going off the shelf. No, no, no. How did tickets go off the shelf when the tour got canceled? See, this is what I'm saying. Family, well, we got receipts. Smash that like button. We rocking. Everybody knows this regulating season, and we're going to regulate. These are receipts, spoilers, invoices, and tax returns. Certified. How all of a sudden... Did the tour get canceled when they saying that the tickets were going off the shelf? They was capping propaganda. They were lying. We done come to find out that the ticket sales weren't as big as what they were hyping it up to be. 
ability to cater to the larger-than-life performances Busta Rhymes is known for. Behind the scenes, the preparations were just as intense. From stage designs to sound checks, from choreography to costume fittings, every detail was being fine-tuned to perfection. The team was working tirelessly, ensuring that the Blockbuster tour would live up to its name. This tour held a special significance in Busta Rhymes' illustrious career. Not only was it a celebration of his musical journey, but it was also a testament to his longevity and influence in the industry. The tour was destined to further cement his legacy, showcasing his evolution as an artist and his unwavering commitment to his craft. Look at that right there. You see how they were trying to do some like world tour? Remember, if I'm not mistaken, was it the BET Awards or the NAACP Awards? They gave him that lifetime achievement. You remember that, y'all? That's what they be doing. They be trying to give these people these fake accolades so they can boost them up. This was meant to solidify him. Let's go there, family. Let's say what needs to be said. Let's say it how it needs to be said. This right here was so they can cement his legacy as a forefather of hip hop, which he never was. This is so they could put him on a pedestal. When we say that the dominant society was trying to use him as someone who co-created hip hop and they could push the narrative, the lie that hip hop was not created by us, they created this fake million dollar tour with all these cities so they can make it some type of lifetime achievement. That is a lifetime achievement tour. That was like Michael Jackson of uh, this is it. That's what they were trying to make it. Now it's funny when Michael Jackson does that, they threw everything out there to try to stop him. They still make documentaries about Mike today. So you see what happens when you are certified, when you're a foundational black American, when you're of the lineage of the culture, they put hurdle, hurdle, blockade in front of you. They didn't really want to represent it. But when you start talking about Buster Rhymes, they said it was to cement his legacy of what? Being a tether? To cement his legacy of what? Being a fleer? Of what? Copying foundational black Americans? Look at all the money, the venues. They're talking about millions of dollars, all these different states. None of that was out here in the streets because we weren't talking about it. They were making it look like it was something we were all anticipating. This is what the dominant society does. They would just create something. They got him and they got Fat Joe. They found two tethers who want to play ball, who want to play patty cake with supremacy. And they said, we're going to give you guys these tours. Fat Joe, he went to the White House. And Buster Rhymes, they were trying to give him a tour. That's what it was. One got to go sit with Kamala Harris, and the other, they were trying to spin around America. So they could say in a few years, these were the forefathers. Notice, they don't talk like that about DMX. They don't talk like that about Tupac. They don't talk like that about Ice Cube, okay? Ice Cube can go on a massive tour. He's on one right now. Right now. He was up in Canada, California, all the East Coast, West Coast, got the big three. Look what they do to his big three. So look what they do to Ice Cube. Look what they did to Tupac. They don't ever talk about Pac. DMX, they don't talk about X. I'm showing them this episode, more Love, Dogs for Life, for DMX than you ever hear. But Buster Rhymes is going on a legacy tour? Buster Rhymes is going on some type of this is it, massive concert? Hell no. That was the dominant society trying to create something that isn't really there. And guess what? They all crashed out in the process. Pro C. In the broader context of the music industry, the Blockbuster Tour was a testament to the power of live performances. It was a reminder that in an era dominated by digital music and streaming platforms, the raw energy and connection of a live concert remain unmatched. Everything was going smoothly until unexpected circumstances threw a spanner in the works. Just when fans were counting down the days to the Blockbuster Tour, a series of unfortunate events led to its abrupt cancellation. Uh-oh, things went left. Things started to go left. All of a sudden, something happened. They said a bunch of issues. Something went abrupt. Let's find out what they were. The first jolt came when Busta Rhymes, known for his electrifying performances and rapid fire rapping style, suffered a minor health setback. With the rigorous demands of a full scale tour, this raised concerns about his ability to perform at his best. Still, wait a minute. They're saying that he had some type of health setback so he couldn't go on a tour. That's funny because now he's going on the tour with Missy Elliott and Sierra. So, how'd you have some type of health setback? that made you cancel this show, but yet you're going on a tour right now with Missy Elliott and Sierra. How come it ain't canceling that? That sounds like a whole bunch of BS. That sounds like cap. That sounds like an excuse. And you're using your health as an excuse for your failures as a rapper. Foundational Black Americans are always here for the receipts. Still, Busta was resilient, assuring fans he'd be back on his feet in no time. Next, there were whispers of internal disputes within the event management team. 
differences in creative vision, it seemed, were causing friction. The now they're saying there's dis there's some type of different issues with the creative team. Hmm. Or is it that the creative team is realizing we need to go ahead and cancel all of these cities and cancel all these states? It sounds like there's some money trouble and you're using health and creative differences as excuses. But in reality, it sounds like the money wasn't there because FBA ain't buying your tickets. We see through all the cap team was divided and the unsettling atmosphere began to cast a shadow over the upcoming tour. It was becoming clear that all was not well behind the scenes. Then came the clincher. A significant sponsor pulled out, citing unforeseen circumstances. This sudden financial hit was a body blow to the already troubled tour. Whoa, 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 no, uh-uh. They think we're going to go over that? No, we're going to catch that. Freeze, 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 freeze. They said that a sponsor pulled out. Family, sponsors only pull out if the tickets ain't selling. Sponsors are only going to pull out if your tickets are not selling. A sponsor is only going to pull out if you having some type of economic issues. A sponsor ain't just pulling out. Y'all notice how they're trying to cover. They're trying to cover. See, they can't just come out and say what we're going to say. See, this is certified foundational black Americans, black alpha network. We can say whatever we want to say. We don't have to lie. We know straight up the sponsors are only pulling out because they have no choice because the tickets are not selling. If the tickets were selling, the sponsors would never pull out. That's the difference between us and them. They're going to come at it and they're going to start flip-flopping and talking around everything. There ain't no censorship here. We say what needs to be said, how it needs to be said, when it needs to be said. Let's be real. Translation, the tickets weren't selling and that tour is in the trash. That's why the sponsors were pulling out. They were trying to save their money. That's why. It was becoming clear that all was not well behind the scenes. Then came the clincher. A significant sponsor pulled out, citing unforeseen circumstances. This sudden fire tour, the loss of funding, a wave of logistical issues began to surface. Lie, lie, lie. Venue booking conference in a series of venue booking. Sounds like venues were saying, we don't want that. Hell no. All these venues know what's going to sell and what ain't. So that was lie, 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 cap, cap, cap. Translation, y'all wasn't hot, y'all wasn't hot, shit in the trash. It delays added to the growing list of obstacles. The team was working around the clock to resolve these issues, but time was running out. In the midst of this chaos, the most heartbreaking news of all emerged. Busta Rhymes, the heart and soul of the tour, decided to step back. Citing personal reasons and a desire to focus on his health, he made the difficult decision to withdraw from the tour. The combined weight of these issues was too much for the blockbuster tour to bear. In the end, the decision was made to cancel the tour. It was a decision no one took lightly, but it became clear that it was the only viable option. This chain of events left fans and the music industry in shock, wondering what would happen next. We weren't in shock. We could have told them. Three years in advance. Don't nobody like Busta. The cancellation of the blockbuster tour sent ripples across the music industry, leaving fans and critics with many questions. It's like the whole world paused for a heartbeat as the news sank in. Busta Rhymes, the man himself, was quick to address his disappointed fans. His candid response, filled with regret and sincerity, reminded us all of the human element behind the glitz and glamour of the music industry. The event organizers, too, were not silent. They Here we go. Here the good part. The event organizers were not silent. So let's just say who they were. The supremacists. The supremacists were not silent. The supremacists are angry at Busta. Busta, you supposed to come over here and we're going to give you all of the curry biscuits to elevate you above certified black society. And you ruined it. You was running around here talking reckless about FBA. And now FBA done canceled your whole tour, Busta. So in reality, this is what it's about. The tether done made the supremacists mad because the FBAs are regulating. Expressed their own disappointment, sharing the immense effort that had gone into planning the tour. The cancellation, they said, was a tough but necessary decision. Fans reacted with a mix of disappointment, understanding, and support. So Boom. Fam, fam, fam. Where do we unpack? Where do we unpack? Where do we unpack? Woo! We can go for days on that one. We can go for days. Family. So, translation, FBA, G-Check, delineate, we ain't rocking with them, tour canceled, means of dollars down the drain. Okay, everybody can go home. Foundation of Black America, we already got the answer. They can say a hundred different words. They can say it a hundred different ways. We know exactly what went down. What really went down, family, he done pissed them sponsors off. Oh, Buster done pissed them off, y'all. Yeah, this is what I always tell people. If a tether does not 
benefit the dominant society, then the tether is in trouble with the dominant society. If the tether cannot benefit, help, or assist the dominant society against FBA, then that tether is in for a hard time. And guess what? Buster failed. It ain't no different than Roland Martin. Roland Martin cannot get black folks to vote Democrat. Roland Martin ass gets fired. Roland Martin cannot get black folks to vote blue no matter who. His ass gets fired. Joy Reid, fired. This is what happens when foundational black Americans do not fall for the game. It is a billion dollar industry to try to fool us, to try to hustle us, to scam us. They thought they was going to come with that 50-50 stuff, didn't they? Fam, didn't they really think that they was going to hit us with the 50-50? They thought that black folks was going to operate like this was the Yes We Can era. What I always say, y'all, it is not the Yes We Can era, it's the Hell to the Gnaw era. And in the Hell to the Gnaw era, let me just tell you some things. In the Hell to the Gnaw era, nah, you ain't hustling us, you ain't fooling us, you ain't disrespecting us. This ain't Barack Obama, okay? We ain't turns in the other cheeks. We're not Edmund Pettus bridging it. No, no, no. In the hell to the gnaw era, people like busted rhymes get they busted ass tour canceled and they busted get thrown off in the trash can and all of the investors' money goes down the drain with them. We have literally ruined Buster Rhymes to where now he is an opening act for Missy Elliott. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Y'all foundationals, y'all have been putting in some work. Yes, y'all have. And it's all because of y'all. The black grassroots are the ones who are responsible. I always say our victories don't look like everybody else. Our victories don't look the same. Our victories, you might have to look at it from a different angle, but you're going to always see that foundational black American presence. You're going to always see that foundational black American fingerprint. We have literally brought down that 50-50 lie the same way we're bringing down the Democrat and the Republican plantation. And let me tell you something. They think it's bad now. Uh, wait until about a month from now when our big brother Tariq Nasheed drops the microphone check. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, all those states, isn't it funny? All of those places that Buster Rhymes was supposed to be going to, all those cities, that's literally where Tariq is going to have the screenings and the openings. So Buster Rhymes was supposed to bring all of his tethering to your city and Foundational Black Americans cancel that. And now Tariq Nasheed and Foundational Black Americans are bringing microphone check to them same cities. There is justice and then there's Foundational Black American justice. There is karma and then there is Foundational Black American induced karma. And we have put it down the fresh way. That's how we operate. Damn, damn, damn. All we do is win, man. All we do is win. All we do is win. All we do is win. That's what you call Buster Rhymes thought he was going to come to your city. Tariq came and mic dropped right in that same city. And guess what? We're going to all go to these screenings. We're going to all go see these movies. And Buster Rhymes is going to be at home trying to pay back all Zaddy's money. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it great? Isn't it spectacular? Isn't it an amazing thing to be a foundational black American where we can literally defeat people just by not showing up? Just don't go. I'm going to tell you like this. When they had asked Kathleen Cleaver, about her husband going to jail. And she said she don't want her husband to go to jail. Certified salute to Kathleen Cleaver, okay, Black Panther. They asked her, they said, how do you feel about your husband going to jail? She said, I don't want my husband to go to jail. They said, well, what do you do about it? She said, just don't go. <laughs> just don't go. What do you mean don't go? I don't want him to go to jail, and he just doesn't have to show up. And that's what foundational Black Americans do. We just ain't got to show up. Voting, we ain't got to show up. We can sit on the couch. Buster Rhymes tour, we ain't got to go. We just sit on the couch. And that means the votes don't come in and the ticket sales don't come in. And when both of those don't come in, it's the domino effect. What's that certified domino effect? Foundational black Americans don't come. All the tethers and the ops fail. All of the supremacists call them to the principal's office. And then when they get to the principal's office, they get the pink slip. That cool unemployment line family started off as about one football field. And now it's probably about 30 football fields and it's growing another 30 every single day. We have created an environment, a country that is so full of our Mujar spirit and our certified energy that nobody can change it. That is why we are winning. That is why we are stronger than ever. And that is why Buster without the rhymes has been thrown on the corner because it's trash day. Checkmate. What they want, y'all. What they want. Y'all seen it. Y'all seen it. He done crashed all the way out. All, all the way out. Nothing left. 
Nothing at this point, family. We just stepping over him. He like Oscar the Grouch, fam. He just sitting over there, sitting there with nowhere to go. Head in the dirt, in the sand, ain't got nothing, can't find nothing, don't know what to do. That's what happens when you deal with certifieds. I'm telling y'all, don't ask for that certified smoke. Don't, because you come knocking on that door, that certified smoke going to get you. And when that certified smoke come to get you, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. So look at it all the way across the board, family. You had the brothers and the sisters who were in their 30s. They not rocking with them. You seen all the young folks who were at all of the uh, homecomings. They laughed at them. They were crickets. They said, boo. I thought it was Riri. They were, boo, they didn't want him. So, I mean, everybody's laughing at Buster Rhymes. Didn't I say that in the beginning? I said, we laugh at tethers. We don't take them serious. They are nothing more than a mere joke to us. And since they are a mere joke, what do we do? We laugh. It's comedy. It ain't real. And this is why foundational black Americans are doing what we do at an all-time all high. These people are done for. These people ain't got nowhere to go. And a tether, go tether. That's all it is, family. A tether is going to tether. But guess what? Now we got these tethers reverse fleeing. Yeah, they reverse fleeing. Why you think he was hopping on that plane? Why you think he was trying to go back to his homeland? Why y'all think that? I'm going to tell you why. It's because you ain't got a place here. We've been making it uncomfortable for everybody. It's uncomfortable for everybody. Nobody's coming around foundational black American getting their stuff off. Nobody's coming around foundational black Americans thinking they winning. If you come around foundational black Americans, you got to deal with foundational black Americans. And this ain't what you want. No, sir. Never. Not at all, y'all. This is how we win. And we win with style. We win in fashion. And guess what? We win the way we choose to. And nobody can do or say a damn thing about it. Just enjoy the show. So, family, we go down that list. And you've seen Buster without the rhymes. You've seen him fall out, crash out, roll out. There ain't nothing they can do. We've been doing it. Y'all seen right now. We done put receipts on the table. This tour was meant to elevate and we regulate. And now his ass is in the trash can. This tour was meant to be a cementing of his legacy. We regulated, now his ass is in the trash can. This tour was spent with millions of dollars by the dominant society to elevate this tether. We regulated, now that tether's in the trash can. This tour was meant to make him something that is bigger than us, but you can never be bigger than the foundational, the architect, and you can never be bigger than the certifieds. So now that we've done that to him, and now that Buster Rhymes is ruined, Buster Rhymes is canceled, Buster Rhymes is done, it ain't just his tour that got canceled. Buster Rhymes' whole goddamn career has been canceled. And foundational black Americans will never allow him to ever come around us and try to talk that 50-50, y'all got this from us, y'all did this with us. No, no, no. What it shows you, that after all of the dust settled, after all the smoke cleared, the only thing left standing was foundational black Americans and what we created. And the thing that we created that they hate so damn much is hip hop. And since we created hip hop, now everybody else has to fall down, bow down, lay down. That FBA flag is waving high in that FBA sky. And all these tethers, including Buster Rhymes, you just got to deal with it. Tethers done fell off. Foundational black Americans are standing on top. Buster Rhymes thought that he was going to tether his way in. And now we have canceled Buster Rhymes and put him in the dumpster, put him in the trash can, threw him on the curve, and he's over with. That's how we win. Now, speaking of him, it would only be right if we start going down the list of these other folks who've been running around here trying to con us and run game on us. Y'all remember I said that it wasn't just Buster. It was also Flab Joe. Yeah, Flab Joe was running around here too. And now I want y'all to notice something with Flab Joe. Notice how Flab Joe, he ain't talking about black folks no more. Because guess what? He done got his regulating. And we done regulated Fat Joe, Flab Joe, to the point where he trying to pull a pivot. And he's trying to talk about Haiti now. Yes, we got Buster Rhymes speaking with a Jamaican accent. And we got Flab Joe talking about Haiti. But what does both of those things have in common? is that we done ran them out the house of foundational black Americans and they can never come in our business again. That's how you do things. Check this. What's going on right now in my mind is Haiti. That's what's going on right now in my mind in Haiti. And I've been home just watching Haiti. And so to me, I got a feeling, just a conspiracy, that Haiti doesn't get the help it deserves because 
It is the first freed black nation. Now, I think they cursed them and said, oh, y'all want to be free? We're going to curse you for life. Now, France, after they left, they came back. They put pressure on Haiti, said, yo, for us to leave, you got to give us a half a billion dollars. Instead of money going in infrastructure, going in schools, going in everything, they gave the money back. Oh, Fresh, what's up, my brother? They gave the money back to France. That's why they kind of in this situation. Then they got a lot of corruption themselves. Themselves. From Boudaille and everything. So you got to understand my best friend is Haitian. So I've been well. Oh, wait a minute now. Now your best friend is Haitian. Now you want to start talking about Haiti. No, before you were running around here talking about hip hop. Isn't it funny how y'all, they want to start talking about Haiti. They want to start talking about all of those issues. They weren't doing this a year ago because they were so far in the foundational black Americans business. So now Fat Joe, Flab Joe is trying to make the Caribbean pivot. And that's a good thing. Go ahead. You can talk about Haiti all day long. If y'all on that Caribbean tip, go ahead and stay on it. Because I know one thing for sure, two things for certain, foundational black Americans are the reason why you going back home. This is what you call reverse fleeing, y'all. This is what I was saying when I said that these folks are reverse fleeing. They are running back to issues that concern their own community because they found out we're not allowing them to speak on our community. When you regulate somebody, you tell them to get the hell out the building. You tell them to stay on their side of the fence. This is what goes down. All of these are foundational black Americans G checking. We got him talking about Haiti. Last year, he was talking about FBA. We got Jamaican Buster Rhymes speaking in an accent. Last year, he was talking like us. This shows you that we don't regulate and made all their asses hit a tether U-turn. That's what it is. A tether U-turn and you can't come back no more. Versed in Haiti matters, right? But it's just sad that it's right next to Santo Domingo. It's an hour away in the plane flight and this shit is happening. The other thing that's bothering me is that the Haitian pe people themselves that are going through the most problems, they telling people, don't come in here. Don't come in here. And so other people, Haitians themselves, are like, we don't want UN, we don't want the United States. I don't know how we're going to help them, but we got to help them. Okay? So keep in mind, I want everybody to remember Haiti. And remember what they're going through. Put them in your prayers and let's figure out, Zoe Dallas, how we can help the Haitian people directly. And so Zoe Dallas, Wyclef Jean, all, all the Haitians, let's get together. Let's do, we got to do some humanitarian food, whatever, for Haiti. I'm in. No, uh -uh. no, 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 no. No, no, no. The only reason you're in is because we kicked you out. That's why. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. Haiti. How many times did he say Haiti? We got to do something for Haiti. I mean, just Haiti. What about Haiti? We need to focus on Haiti. I mean, Haiti, 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 Haiti. You weren't talking about Haiti last year. It was FBA, FBA, FBA. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to talk about Haiti left and right. No, 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 no. You can talk about Haiti all you want to. Go ahead. Have a great time. But just know you got that stamp on you that Foundation Black Americans kicked your ass out. Just know that. So next time you think that you're going to come back, Foundation Black Americans, the same ones, are going to be right here waiting on you. We done got up that fence. We done slammed that door. We got the bolts on it. We got that big ass no trespassing sign. And it says no trespassing, FBA only. You cannot come around. You cannot come in. You better worry about your own stuff. That's what it is and he was pleading y'all he was pleading and y'all know why let's look a little deeper into that all right let's look a little deeper into that fam i'm gonna tell you why it's going down like that what's really happening is that phone done rang zaddy was on that phone and he said listen flab joe fba ain't going for your lies fba ain't falling for your games microphone is about to drop on your mm, all right that microphone check is coming the movie is about to be big. You are not going to have a place to tell these lies to FBA no more. We done sent you out to Kamala Harris. FBA rejected you. 
We done sent you out to the BET Awards. FBA rejected you. We done sent you out to every little public event. FBA rejected you. We done invested so much supremacist dollar in you. We cannot put you above FBA because foundationals ain't going for it. So let's go ahead and send you off into Haiti and we'll let you go hustle them. The same way we sent Stacey Abrams over to Nigeria because it didn't work on us here in Georgia is the same way they're sending Fat Joe over to Haiti because it didn't work on us right here in America. When it don't work on FBA in America, they send these folks all the way over to every other country. Reverse fleeing, y'all. They fled over here to get in on us, and now they got to flee because we ain't going for it. Foundational Black Americans, on code, on point, on game. It regulates everything and puts everything else on the corner. But, yo, it wasn't just that, y'all. No, 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 no. No, no, no. There's a lot of other folks running around here trying to tell us, what about Haiti now? We, we got to focus on Haiti. Just focus on Haiti. Now, it's funny. These folks were never trying to get foundational black Americans any type of love, any type of support until foundational black Americans started coming up in the game. Ron Daniels. Yes, Ron Daniels, founder of the Haiti Support Project. And if I'm not mistaken, he's one of these in Cobra narc guys. He's been running around trying to tell foundational black Americans, man, y'all need to help Haiti. Y'all need to donate to Haiti. Yeah. Yeah. This is what they doing, y'all. Yeah. Because they understand now, y'all. They understand. They cannot get foundational black Americans to let these people get into our business. So now they're trying to pull us over into their business. And we're not going for that either. We like, nope, I ain't going nowhere. Ten toes down. Right where you standing is the only place that you need to go. All right. If I want to go somewhere, I'm going to go see my fellow foundational black American. That's what I'm going to do. All of y'all. We got 850 plus people in here. Smash that like button. 830 some people. Smash that like button. We're going to rock together as one team. We're going to rock together as one unit, one lineage. We ain't got to go nowhere. So since these people try to come in our business, they're trying to get us to go back in their business. There's a whole lot of tricky things they try to pull on us, y'all, but ain't nothing working. So now the desperation is kicking in full time and they can keep on trying. Watch this man right here. Start talking about, we all owe Haiti a debt? Yes. This man literally says, family, that we owe Haiti a debt and we should help Haiti. They want foundational black Americans to put reparations on the corner. They want foundational black Americans to put tangibles on the corner, put all of our regulating and G-checking on the corner and pick our bags up and say, we gonna get back the reparations. Let's go help Haiti. We're going to get back to reparations. Let's go help Jamaica. And they mad right now that we ain't fall for it. Watch the trick words and how he's trying to get us to donate to Haiti. I am the founder of the Haiti Support Project. And if I seem a little bit out of source today, it's probably because I've been working very hard to resolve the current crisis in Haiti. Many of you are aware that my commitment uh, working with Haiti over the years, I believe that we owe a debt to Haiti. All people of African descent. Stop. I want y'all to catch that. He said, we owe a debt to Haiti. And then he starts saying how all people of the African diaspora. See, let me say this now. I believe they that we owe a we. debt to Haiti. They'll say we real quick. When he says we, he's talking about FBA. He's talking about FBA. And then he adds everybody else throughout the diaspora. The original statement was we. We meaning FBA. He's saying that we owe them a debt, whether that's a debt of money or that's a debt of actually just going to help him. And then he says it's all because they are the ones who first started to fight supremacy. Y'all know that same thing. We the first ones who stopped supremacy. Everybody owes us. A lot of these folks from Haiti run around with this thing. And we're going to say it that we owe them something because they were the first ones to fight back. They had a one hit wonder. What everybody say? They say that Haiti is the whoop there it is of black empowerment they had a one hit and for the last 200 years they've been trying to wag that in foundational black americans face how did it work out for you on the second day you was real good on the first day how did it work out for you on the second day exactly now watch how he says we and then he pivots to everybody else and notice at the end he's going to start talking about donate so where that my commitment uh, working with Haiti over the years, I believe that we owe a debt to Haiti. All people of African descent owe a debt to Haiti because of the incredible Haitian revolution 
which shattered the myth of white supremacy at the prop at the height of the propagation of the notion of white supremacy. He said it shattered the myth. I want y'all to notice this, family. When he says it shattered the myth, he's trying to pull one of those, man, ain't nobody supreme over me now. Man, what you talking about now? No, uh Now, it's funny because you go over there right now and they swimming in cake soap. So I'm not sure how much it shattered anything. This is what I'm saying. No one talks about foundational black Americans contribution being the only lineage on the planet that ever stands up to supremacy. I'm not talking about a one hit wonder. I'm talking about two, three, four, five million hits that we done put out in these streets. Consistency, brothers, certified, certified sisters together. Nobody talks about what we've done to the system of supremacy. He want to talk about Haiti and how we owe them a debt. No, we don't owe nobody nothing. Anybody who comes around and says foundational black Americans and owe they better be talking about how we're owed reparations and not how we owe somebody else. The only thing that owed comes against us is money for our own pockets. Haiti is now experiencing, as you look at the news, the greatest crisis I have experienced and have seen since we've been working in Haiti in 1995. Gangs have virtually taken over the capital as an illegal, illicit president or prime minister who should have been long gone, uh, who was clinging to power with the support, unfortunately, of the United States government, which was complicating the matter. And then, you know, you have rapes and burnings and lootings and extortion of women just being exploited and children. It is a mess. It's very, very bad. HSP is deeply, the Haiti Support Project, is deeply committed to working with the Haitian sisters and brothers to resolve the crisis, however. And we are. We are working with people every day because we have the experience. No, 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 no. And he's trying to get us to donate to his little thing. And he probably put that in his pockets. It's funny. These folks, what they do, y'all, they come around us and they start talking about all that money and helping out and this, that, and the other thing. In reality, fam, go ahead and donate $2. They're going to put that in their pocket. Where are these folks at when it comes to fighting supremacy right here in these borders? When it comes to fighting supremacy in the United States of America, you can't ever see these people. You don't ever see these people ever talking about fighting supremacy when it comes to FBA. When FBA is out here fighting supremacy, and we done all been on the front lines of fighting supremacy, all of a sudden these folks is nowhere to be found because they understand it ain't going to be easy pickings to get nothing from us. It ain't going to be smooth selling to get nothing from us. Anything that you try to do, family, you're going to have to go ahead and do on your own. Hold your own NUTs. That's the type of time we on, y'all. Hold your own. Foundational Black Americans, y'all, we don't owe nobody nothing, okay? The only thing foundational Black Americans need to do is get up every single day and be exceptional. That is it. All this stuff about who we owe and who we need to help, they only start talking about that when we got on code. When we got on code and we start talking about a debt, we start talking about a money. Now everybody else is talking about a debt and they talking about money. They talking about coming to get something from us. The only thing that they're going to ever get from us is two middle fingers and they can take them right on back to their village and have a great time because foundational black Americans ain't giving up nothing. But fam, let's talk about some of these tethers. See, when you start talking about these tethers, fam, a tether is the number one recruit for the erasure from the dominant society. And they go all around the world and they literally handpick people. See, when we start talking about how immigration and stuff works, we got to get rid of that old immigrant, right? That we think of someone from a poor country is coming over here. That's some type of stuff to make you think there's good intentions involved. No, 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 no. They hand select people who are easily to control, who are docile and submissive, and who will give them what they want. They dump off migrants in our community. The same way they used to dump off crack in our community in the 80s. In the 1980s, it was dumping crack in the community. In the 2000s, it's dumping tethers and migrants in our community. And they only do that. Yeah, I said it. I'm going to say that one more time. Okay, three times. The same way they dumped off crack is the same way they dumping off migrants and tethers. And they come in all different shapes. Tethers come in different colors. There's tethers of color, okay? Not just POCs. There's TOCs. Tethers of color. And all of these tethers are coming around from all these different places. And the first thing they do is show up and try to eat off us because it's in their deal. It is their deal. It's in their package to come to America and sell us out 
so they get their butter biscuits. If there's no butter biscuits to selling us out, they got to go back home. Now they're coming against resistance, but we are sending them back home. Reverse fleeing, G-checking. They never thought they'd get to these shores and they find foundational black Americans who are locked tight. All right. Now they have. So now people are popping up from everywhere and you see these Haiti this, Haiti that, Haiti that. But fam, there's a whole, whole bunch of folks running around here and they saying a whole bunch of things that foundational black Americans ain't going to go for. Remember how we were just seeing that right there when the person was talking about Haiti, 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 Haiti? Well, if you listen close enough and long enough, you'll start hearing people tell the truth about Haiti. And every now and then you'll get one of their people that is say the same thing that we're saying. We don't just drop receipts from what we say. We're going to go get receipts from what your own people say and make you deal with that. Checkmate. This is coming from a Haitian girl. The fact that y'all have normalized invalidating black American culture to the point that a white lady is telling a black girl that she has no culture because she was born and raised in America. Excuse me. Excuse me. Did the rest of the diaspora. I'm from Haiti. Haitian people are originally from where? Africa. You would never tell me I don't have a culture because my people build our culture from the ground up. Just because black American culture is not seen in the traditional sense, the way y'all see the rest of the world's culture does not mean they don't have a culture. Culture starts from somewhere. Correct. Correct. They have their own dialect of English, the same way Jamaican people doing. Y'all don't question it. They have their own styles, head wraps, things of that nature. And um, the same way every other culture do. But y'all question it. Y'all question it. They learn how to make food specific to them because y'all would not even give them real food and they still made a whole meal out of it. The way y'all invalidate black Americans to the point is ridiculous. Half the cultures in the world were had to be rebuilt because of colonization. But you want to question black Americans? Come on now. Be this is what we saying, y'all. I got to see that one more time. It, it, it's about one minute long. Let, let, her, let her cook. I'm going to let her cook one more time. This is coming from a Haitian girl. The fact that y'all have normalized invalidating black American culture to the point Point that a white lady is telling a black girl that she has no culture because she was born and raised in America. Excuse me? Excuse me? Did the rest of the diaspora? I'm from Haiti. Haiti from where? Africa. You would never, I don't have a culture because my people build our culture from the ground up. Just because black American culture is not seen in the traditional sense, the way y'all see the rest of the world's culture, does not mean they don't have a culture. Starts somewhere, correct? They have their own dialect of English way Jamaican people doing y'all don't question it. They have their own style, head wrap, things of that nature, and um the same way every other culture do. But y'all question it? Question it. I don't specific to them because y'all would not even give them real food and they still made a whole meal out of it. The way y'all invalidate black Americans to the point is ridiculous. Half the cultures in the world were had to be rebuilt because of colonization. But you want to question black Americans? Come on, for real. That part, that part, that part. This is what we're talking about, y'all. This is what we're saying. This is what we're saying. They, oh, they hate when that happens. They hate that. See, one thing about FBA, one thing about us, y'all, we're going to always go find somebody from their communities that's going to prove everything that we say, all right? It don't matter what they come against us and what they try to tell us. We can point to anybody from anywhere that's going to highlight and validate the same exact things that we've been saying. We don't even have to go search it. They come to us. This is what they don't like, family. This is what they cannot stand. Foundational Black Americans, our culture is the strongest culture. Anybody who's ever left America, all you see is FBA. That's one thing they don't talk about. When you leave America, let me tell you, you do not see cowboys, all right? You don't see nobody running around here trying to be like a W cowboy, even though we started that, okay? But you don't see nobody running around here trying to eat Brussels sprouts, all right, and bland mashed potatoes. You don't see that when you leave America. You see people trying to eat like us. You don't see nobody trying to do country music. All right. Outside of America. Ain't nobody trying to be Dolly Parton when you leave America, but they trying to be Beyonce. Ain't nobody trying to be Garth Brooks. I ain't seen no Garth Brooks in Asia. I ain't seen no Garth Brooks in Latin America. They don't even have Garth Brooks in Europe. Europe, the home of supremacy, has more people trying to duplicate our culture. FBA culture travels around this world before you wake up in the morning and put your pants on. That's how fast it goes. And everybody knows it. So when it comes to us, family, they know damn well that our culture is the strongest and they cannot accept it. They cannot stand it. But like I always say, they just have to deal with it. That's the bottom line, y'all. And it's starting to pop out left and right. This is what you're seeing. You're seeing a whole lot of people coming around here saying different things. And you're starting to see a whole lot of people speaking things. And it all goes back to what? Foundational Black Americans.
Americans up being levels above everybody else. Listen to this guy and what he had to say about the same situation in black immigrants. You know, what really starting to bug me more and more when you have immigrants who love to black immigrants who do live talking about black on black crime. They wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute. Time out, time out before we go there. Before we go there, let me just say one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. Family, we are in the building, and I got to say this real quick. Johnny Lee, I like Brussels sprouts. Okay, uh, just make sure some seasonings on them, okay? Because if some seasoning ain't on your Brussels sprouts, I'm going to have to ask you where your people from, brother. All right? Just, I'm just saying, you like Brussels sprouts, okay? But don't like them the same way that Jethro does. Don't like them the same way that Billy Bob, okay? There best be some seasoning or something on them, okay? If you like Brussels sprouts. That, that ain't really going to fly like in Brussels sprouts, fam, unless you got some real seasoning and you done FBA them up, okay? If you ain't FBA them up, then where are your people from? That's all I got to say <laughs> as we proceed. Love to talk about black on black crime. Now, don't talk about the crime in your own community. Now, you have the Haitian, and I'm not saying all Haitian do stuff like this, but when it's Haitian, um, um, Jason, two roommates, is that considered black on black crime? Or is that Caribbean on Caribbean crime? Or is that non-black American crime? You, you see? See, they will lump everybody who is black, even from another country, when they do crime, and put it with the statistics of black America. But let me show you what the guy looked like in case you want to say, how do you know he Haitian? Now, as you can see right here, this is the guy right here, as you can see. Now, he the one who actually did that to his roommate. No, he's not black American at all. He don't, he's not from our, our, my lineage or other FBA lineage. But again, is this black on black crime or is this Caribbean on Caribbean crime? Or this is Haitian or Haitian crime? You see, when they do bad, when bad stuff happen, they lump all that trash to the black community. I'm sick and tired of your black immigrants doing live talking about black on black crime. Um, why don't you worry about your own country? Fix this problem right here. That is what we've been saying in the black grassroots for the longest time, y'all. For the longest time. And what is that, fam? These are all black grassroots talking points and statements. That is exactly what we've been doing. We've been telling everybody out here, these folks to come here and they'll commit a crime and it'll be black, 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 black. And then let them get some award that the dominant society gave to them. Then all of a sudden it turns into Caribbean, 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 African, African, African. We've been saying that. And this is the beauty of it. Once again, don't let nobody tell you we're not powerful, fam. We're beyond powerful. All right. We're the strongest lineage in the world, y'all. And it's not just by what we do. Our words hold weight. Because when we say things, all you got to do is watch the ripple effect across the whole damn country, fam. Everybody across the whole world. Though everybody takes what we say. If it wasn't for us in the black grassroots, people wouldn't even be saying that. How do I know? It's because they weren't saying that five years ago. Five years ago, people were really falling for that. They were like, man, that, that's true now. It's black, man. We we as people ain't no we. You got to be very cautious when you say we. If you say we and you're not talking either French or you're not talking about your brother or your sister. See, we only applies to your family. When we start talking about the FBA family tree, then it's we. When you start moving outside of the FBA family tree, oh, ain't no more we no more. No, no. It turned into them and they's. And I'm very, very, very proud saying them and they. Them over there are not FBA, and they better keep their asses over there. You can't come over here to the House of Foundational Black Americans. That's the difference. All these mixing terms and blended up terms, well, who does what, where, go, why? No, no, no. That's never served us as a community, fam. We've been on the same game, on the same page at the same time. We understand what it is. And that's the first thing they try to do to us. They want to mix us in with everybody so they can dilute what we got going, and then it can get confusing. Notice, when all these other groups get all these different tangibles and benefits that they do get, okay, because like we said, it's in their package deal to come to America and to get things from us. When all of these groups get that from the dominant society, we ain't ever mixed in. How come we ain't never mixed in with the tangibles that these politicians hand out to everybody but us? We never mixed in with that. We're delineating. We're separating. Matter of fact, we can't even get to a point where we say we're doing it. We've done it. All right. It's clear to say now delineation is it's, it's a wrap. It's over with. We have delineated to the point where we are over here and they are over there. We are not Haitians. Uh, 
We are not Jamaicans. Uh, we are not Africans. Uh, we're not people of colors and minorities, blacks and browns. We are certified foundational black Americans. That is it, bottom line, and that is a non-negotiable. And once you tell people like that and you draw that damn line in the sand, everything else is good. Everything's good. Y'all know they've been running around here trying to do the OMB and what we're going to call y'all. Man, I don't give a damn what they call because we're going to call ourselves exactly who we've always been. Y'all know this, fam. They'll get into this whole game of what we're going to call y'all and who are y'all and what we're going to say this week. But guess what? That has never meant anything. The only thing that matters is foundational black Americans and what we call ourselves. Because if you look, y'all, when it comes to this name call game and what we're going to call black folks, family, we've never accepted the terms that they've given us. The only thing that we've ever done, y'all, is been true to ourselves. So if they call you whatever term they come up with tomorrow, you counter that by saying FBA. If they call you whatever term they come up with next week, you counter that by saying FBA. If they call you whatever term they come up with next year, you counter that by saying FBA. The more you say foundational black American freedmen only, the more all of their fake names don't matter. Boy, we cooking tonight. Smash that like button. Black Alpha Network in the building. We are delineating, separating all the way to our reparations. Regulate time. Look at this right here, family. This was an actual article that came out in the 1980s. We all know that Jesse Jackson was the one responsible for coming up with African-American. Him and a couple other of his little people, they're the ones who came up with the term African-American. All right. African-American is a term that they just came up with. Yes, indeed. A lot of people think African-American has been around for years. No, it's not. Go find me the speech from Dr. Huey P. Newton where he says African-American. Can't find it. Go find me a speech with Fred Hampton where he says African-American. Cannot find it. Go find me the speech with Asada Shakur. And she says African-American. You can't find it because African-American is a brand new term. Check this out, y'all. African-American term less preferred, poll says, meaning we've been rejecting that term from the jump. This is why I say you have to always stick true to who you are. You have to always be true to yourself. It does not matter what they call you. It's all about what you refer to yourself as. And then if they cross that line, you show them who you are. Simple as that. Self-pride, self-focus, self-determination. African-American term, less preferred. Washington, despite increasing use of the term African-American, most black Americans still prefer to be called black. Uh-oh, uh-oh. They don't want to show you this. You're not going to see this article on MSNBC. You're not going to see this article on CNN. You're not going to see this article on Fox News. They're going to hide this from you. Yeah, let's go back to the 1980s. One thing about the Black Alpha Network. If we got to go back in time to pull out a receipt, if we got to go into a desk, pull out a file, we're going to find it and we're going to show everybody where the receipts really come from. It found 72% preferred black and only 15% like the term Afro-American. And they said 2% preferred Negro with the rest giving no opinion to the response. The change from black to African-American was first proposed in December 1988. Family, this article came from 1988. This is showing you. At a meeting in Chicago to lay the groundwork for the African American Summit that was held in New Orleans in April 1989. So let's, let's get this right. In Chicago, 1988, they came up with the term African American for an African-American summit that they were planning in New Orleans the year later, 89. Yes, these terms were all created then. It makes you wonder at this summit, what were they talking about? They were probably saying, let's put African on it so we can blend in Africans uh, with black Americans. Uh. An African-American could be someone from Africa who just got here 20 minutes ago. A foundational black American didn't get here, we're from here. Big difference. This is why we reject all terms that are not 
sealed and approved by us. Yes, this is the FBA era and everything that we say goes. And if we do not say it, then it's bullshit. Simple as that. Call us cocky. Call us what you want. But call us exceptional. Proceed. Civil rights leader Reverend Jesse Jackson endorsed the idea at the summit and has since been adopted by such other prominent blacks in New York. Mayor David Deacons, Atlanta Mayor Menard Jackson, U.S. Representative William Gray, and some other black organizations. Y'all know who them black organizations were. They was the NAACPs. Uh, they was the Narcs and the Encobras and all the 80s versions. Oh, we going there. We going there. If you feel me flow, smash that like button. Subscribe to the Black Alpha Network. We building in here tonight, y'all. Certified. FBA above everything. Promise that. This shows you that they were all meeting collectively so they can get this off the ground. This shows you the conspiracy to create the word African-American. Same way they're trying to create POCs and minorities and all that stuff today. We are laying that all out. Jesse Jackson was the main person they selected to be the one that publicized the word. It was all of these organizations, all the boule, the boule and all of the boule buddies and friends all got together and they overrode our community. This is why we G-check and regulate all of these organizations. You see in this article, it says, black people do not prefer African-American. Black people at 72%, which is the overwhelming majority in 1988 said, we want black. And they said, no, we're going to take this little 15% and we're going to overwrite the 72%. Hell no, hell no, hell no. They proceed. The Joint Center had not embraced the change. Individuals here use the term, but as an institution, we have not adopted it. These are people saying, no, we don't want that. We don't want that. And then what they do, they say, we don't care what you want. We're going to do it anyway, because Master told me. Mr. Morris and Mr. Jackson endorse, endorsement appeared to have been the chief and promptuous for the movement to change African-American. Listen to that. Mr. Jackson and Mr. Morris, those are the two people that are the main ones who had been hand selected by the dominant society to go ahead and usher in the term African-American. They said there is a strong inclination among what might call the elite in the black community to fall in line with such pronouncements. So they have the white community has been very responsive. Man, listen, well, hold on, hold on. I need to see the family before I pull that back up. Please work with me, feel me now, y'all. I got to talk to y'all. Let's talk about that. The article just said right there, it just said, and hey, DM me, I'll send it to you directly so you can see it more clear or you can have it. I'll post it tomorrow. You can screenshot it. It said what we say, literally what we say. Fam, nothing we say does not come true. Everything we say comes true. We literally call everything out. We are that thorough. We are that certified. We're that intelligent. We know what it is. We literally just sat there and he said, the black elites are out here pushing the term African-American because the white community likes it. That is exactly what we've been saying about your Jackson Jills, about your Boulays, about your Democratic Shields, about the NAACP, about NARC and Cobra. It's the same people today. They're literally telling you right now in 2024, okay, April 9th, 2024, we're going back in time to 1988, and we see an article that's telling you black people resisted the term overwhelmingly at 72%. And then you had other black people who were saying, no, Jesse Jackson and all of these other boo politicians, they're the ones putting this word on us. They're trying to get us to wear that jacket because their dominant society handlers want it. This is why we denounce all of those different people, this is why we will never rock with them. And the foundational black American era is in here. You're going to have to see it. You're going to have to see it. You're going to have to respect it. That's the bottom line. And we ain't changing it for nothing. They're not going to be keep putting these names on us. This is what they've been trying to do. And that got you African-American. Dude says at the end of it, he says, there is a strong inclination among what might call the elite, the boule, in the black community to fall in line with such pronouncements. So they have, and the white community has been very responsive. OK, Mr. Moore said the group undertook its survey because at no limit and no time have we had any sense of what the public preference were. See, they're talking about what the public wanted. 
They don't want to hear what the public wanted. This is why they give us the shields, and this is why they give us all the tap dancers. They always do this thing where the black grassroots feels this way, and then they give us Buster Rhymes. The black grassroots feels this way, then they give us Little Nas X. The black grassroots feels this way, and they give us Sexy Red. Now in this generation, we're saying, I don't give a damn what the Boule thinks. I don't give a damn what the NAACP or any coon or Democratic Shield feels. It's what we say. He says, there have been, however, some previous surveys and polls in 1989 by Time Magazine and Chicago Tribune. 26% of black respondents said that they preferred the term. 61% at the time said they preferred black, Tri Tribune said, and 31% said they didn't even want the term at all. And then next thing you know, African-American was ushered in. And every child that was born in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, they think that the term African-American has been around since the 1930s and 40s. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. This is what we call miseducation, misdirection, and misrepresentation. And they serve us that all the time. So if you look at it right now, family, that is what they've been trying to do with us, with the MO, with the OMB, MOB, money over boule, money over boule. There you go, MOB, money over boule. That's a new term. Y'all write that down, MOB, money over boule. This is what they've been trying to do with us, with the OMB. FBA, Foundational Black Americans, Freedmen, we made it clear what we wanted. They said, we're going to go over that. But the problem is this. This is not the yes, we can era. This is not the can't we get along era. This is not the all lives matter era. On the way to trying to usher in their own terms and to name us, they ran into this foundational black American compound. And it don't work. The same way on the way to trying to give us Buster Rhymes. They ran into this FBA compound. They couldn't get past it. They can't shake it. They can't maneuver around it. So this is the first generation, y'all, where the black grassroots is in control. The black grassroots is in demand. The black grassroots is taking full command. Before, the grassroots was cool, but the mainstream could do what they wanted to do. We say left, they say no, we're going to go right. We say up, they say no, we're going to go down. Now, we done g check regulate it, and we done put them all in the same place, ball them up real tight, threw them in that damn can, and like I said, we done took out the trash. So what we say goes. So when they thought that they was going to pull with that OMB and name us what they wanted, they thought that this was the African-American. No, 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 no. It's a foundational black American. They thought that they were dealing with the yes, we can era. No, 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 no. This is the hell to the gnaw era. And simply by putting it down that way, so fresh and so clean, foundational black Americans got everybody shook because what used to happen happens no more. And what's going to happen is going to be what we say happens. FBA always wins. Let's proceed, family. This is, shows you that the game has changed dramatically. And, and now everybody is sending out all of these ops, these TikTok ops and everybody else. And the scam Africans are running around here trying to tell us who we are. You can't tell us who we are, family, because if you ain't got the memo, <laughs> FBA makes all the rules. It's all world. You just paying rent. Takes like this used to annoy me, but it really speaks to how well our people have been miseducated. At no point in 300,000 years of human history has a people been oppressed so much that they forget who they are in a few centuries. Until you get to black Americans. And then you have to know that was intentional. When we say that we are not African and that we are Americans, we become accomplices in the destruction of our history. Marcus Garvey said, a people without knowledge of their history is like a tree with no roots. Tell me how we spend 300,000 years in Africa, but only 400 years in America, and now all of a sudden we're not African. Uh, I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> because ain't none of us ever been to Africa. That's why, homie. And we built the United States of America. That's why, homie, and we are the architects of the United States of America. That's why, homie. So really what you need to do, you need to go ahead and hook up them clippers and you need to go ahead and shave that beard, all right? Because it looks like it's running away from you. And it sounds like you're really upset because your scam Africanism ain't working no more. This is what we saying, family. When we stand on business, they get mad as hell. And he mad as hell because what we say goes, our world. How does it 
make sense to y'all that everyone else gets to have ancient ancestors, but our ancestors only come from a few centuries ago? Who does it benefit for you to believe that you have an allegiance to a plantation instead of an allegiance to- Hold on, hold on, time out, rewind, run it back, stop, hold up, wait a minute. Actually, we do have ancient ancestors right here in the United States of America. We do. And they're all foundational black Americans because we've already broke down right here on the Black Alpha Network that we've been here literally for thousands of years. He may not know. See, he think he's smart. He think he thought he was flexing, didn't he? He thought he was flexing. Man, how come everybody else gets ancestors from a thousand years ago, but we don't have ancestors from just nowhere now? I'm going to tell you why. Because you don't know your history, chump. And reality is this. Foundational black Americans, we have ancestors from thousands of years ago. We have ancestors from hundreds of years ago. We have ancestors from 50 years ago. And soon we will be the ancestors for the next generation. You can't do that, scam African. To the land that you were stolen from. Meanwhile, those that colonized and created America claim that their ancestors was the Vikings and the ancient Romans. They even claim African history and say they built Egypt. I ain't never met one of them that said their ancestry started with Christopher Columbus. If someone kidnaps you from your home, points a pew pew to your head, and tells you to build them a house, are you going to move in? Do you get what I'm saying? Well, first off, foundational. First off, the Africans sold those black people, if you really want to go there. See, this is what happens when you are uh, a, a, a little guy, okay? When, when you're a little peewee, all right? All right, what, what you need to do, you need to go ahead and you need to go all the way back and learn some things that we learned a long time ago, okay? This is what needs to happen for that guy. Matter of fact, I, I wonder where he's really from, by the way, all right? What happens is, is foundational black Americans created this country. Foundational black Americans built this country. And let's go ahead and put something to bed here. What nobody saying? You better go ahead and build America, you, you slave. Let me say this. They tried to build America before blacks and they could not do it. When they got here, they failed at everything. The original fleer is the European, all right? You have the fleers now who come, but the original fleer was the European. They tried and attempted to build America and they fell flat on their face. Foundational black Americans did not just build America. We are the architects of America. Where do you think all the structures, all the blueprints came from? It didn't come from the Klein McLeod. It didn't come from the Christopher Columbus. No, and people had already started to build America before they ever got here. This thing where America was just built just when the slaves got here, what do you think the foundational black American ancestors, the Maroons and everybody was doing for thousands of years prior? Building the landmass. So we built the landmass. We built the structure. We ushered in the era from the ancient history because we have ancient foundational black American ancestors. And I'm not talking about Africa. I'm talking about right here in the good old USA. There'd be no USA without FBA. Understand, believe, and check that. So you have us foundations who built the original indigenous era, ushered that into the modern era, and now we're in the current era. That's indigenous all the way into the ancient, all the way into the modern, all the way into the current. And guess what? Every single time you see that, you see who? Foundational Black Americans. Trust me, we didn't just build the country because someone told us to. We built the country because we're the only ones who were capable of doing it. Now, he wouldn't know that because he looks like he needs to go ahead, shave his beard, go ahead and get dressed and jump out the goddamn dumpster he's living in, all right? And foundational Black Americans, we're going to be over here doing what we do best. We're going to stay clean. We're going to stay real. We're going to stay certified. That part, that part, that part. No matter what Mr. Raggedy got to say, foundational Black Americans are here to stay. And I got to let everybody know something. This is the realest thing you're going to ever, 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 ever see, okay? When you start talking about certified, who certified and who ain't, we certified that guy right there is a clown. We certified that guy right there is just another loss, you know what. So he could take the scam Africanisms, he can run it all the way back, but at the end of the day, no matter what you say, no matter what you choose, you're going to have to deal with the most certified of all time, and that is us. Come on, tap into the Black Alpha Network. Come and see all the Black grassroots. We got 800 plus people in here. Out of all of us 800, we're going to teach everybody what it really is. Now, whether they want to accept it, whether they want to acknowledge it or whether they want to admit it. All of us 800, we're going to drop the facts. So if my sister don't get you, my brother will. 
if my brother don't get you, my sister will. But I guarantee you one thing, you're going to know where FBA stand because the facts that we put on the table cannot be debated because we are exceptional. Look at this right here, family. I think our brother played this the other night. OMB decided not to move forward with calls to require agencies to gather data to better understand the descendants of enslaved people originally from Africa. They don't say originally from any of these other places, right? Okay, cool. Got it. Check this out. They say how the OMB and the Federal Registration Notice, they put up further research is needed, adding that there was opposition to the proposal from civil rights groups and others because of concerns over the difficulty of verifying that identification is accurate. The usefulness of necessity of data. Look how they're throwing all these words. The verified of usefulness of information and accuracy of data. Never trust somebody who throws in a bunch of words that make no sense and don't even fit. All right. The person who's speaking real is the person who's speaking plain. The person who's giving you all that babble and all that extra talk. That's the one lying to you. The inclusion of other groups of historically enslaved people and the creation of confusion that could make the black or African American community harder to count. You see right there, that is identical to what we just talked about with that article from 1988. Who is the same player involved? The civil rights organizations. In 1980, the civil rights organizations, they overrode the black grassroots and they gave us African American opposed to being black, remember, it said only like 12% of people even wanted African-American, and they was probably all coons, and 72% preferred black. They elevated 12% over 72% to give us African-American. Now they're trying to give us POCs. They're trying to take these things off, deny what we got based on the boule. The difference between then and now is that they got to deal with us. So basically, in other words, family, even though that's the same exact article from 1988 that I'm reading in 2024, and even though it's the same bootlick tap dancing civil rights organizations from 1988 that I'm reading in 2024, the difference is, is that foundational black Americans in 2024, we go cancel all that shit. So nice try, try again, not happening. We are the culture and we so much of the culture family. I got to play this for y'all. I want y'all to see this because when we start talking about the culture and everybody said, we ain't got this, we ain't got that, we ain't got that. I always tell people, your grandmother, my grandmother could pull up a chair and they could talk like sisters. Why? Because they are sisters. Your grandfather, my grandfather could pull up a chair and they could talk like brothers. Why? Because they are brothers. Me and you, you and I, we going to see each other in Washington, D.C. for the reparations rally, Juneteenth celebration. And we're going to all talk like we're brothers and sisters. Why? Because we are family. And you only get that with foundational black Americans. Let me show you this right here. Somebody tell me that this ain't some certified energy. If you've ever seen it, certified salute to all of the foundational black American mothers. Because only an FBA mother is going to give you this type of energy right here. If y'all have not seen this, Y'all got to watch this. You're going to enjoy it. And this goes ahead. We can put all the facts on the table. We can go back in the 80s. We can drop all the receipts. We can give them the spoilers, the invoices, and the tax returns, family. But if that don't work for them, then let's just see a foundational black American mother go ahead and tell you where our coach is at. She's going to regulate better than I ever could. It's, Here we go. I came to speak to those who seem to think that moms are just moms. Well, baby, let me let you in on who we really are. We alarm clocks, we're bathroomers, we're, we're profilers, we're cooks, we're nannies, housekeepers, and that's all we get ourselves in the morning. We're physicians, but we can heal wounds. We ain't got no degree in that either, but we can mediate between siblings who can't seem to get along, and sometimes adults who act like kids too. We are chefs who can pull together a meal with the scraps in the refrigerator, who can make money stretch when you don't even know we are because you don't seem to. Oh, no, they're trying to stress that you don't seem to. Oh, see, they're trying to stop our sister from talking. Hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We ain't going for it. Hold on. We're going to get that. No, no, no. Uh Uh-uh. That ain't how the game flow. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Run it up. Run it up. Run it up. Let me see if I run that back from the beginning. Okay. I don't mind hearing it twice. Yes. 
I came to speak to those who seem to think that moms are just moms. Well, baby, let me let you in on who we really are. We alarm clocks, we're bathroom attendants, we're hairdressers, we're personal stylists, we're cooks, we're nannies, we're housekeepers, and that's all before we get that stuff together in the morning. We're, we're physicians, but we ain't got no PhD, but we can heal wounds. We're lawyers, we ain't got no degree in that either, but we can mediate between siblings who can't seem to get along, and sometimes adults who act like kids too. We are chefs who can pull together a meal with the little scraps in the refrigerator. We're accountants who can make money stretch when you don't even know. We are strong because we can hide the stress that you don't seem to think we go through. We are all the things that you don't even see at night with prayer warriors praying over our house when everybody else is asleep. We are the ones that's keeping the enemy at bay because we're the one laying on our face. We are the strong weapons who God has ordained for this position, baby. We ain't just a mother and you better not even let that come out your mouth again. Let me tell you who we are. Woo! They cut it off. No, no, no. Keep cooking, sister. Keep cooking. Yes, indeed. Family, come on. They don't want none. They don't want no problems. They, they don't want no problems. Let me tell you something like this. Let me tell you something like this. There ain't nothing on this planet Earth that is stronger than a certified foundational black American woman. Every woman on the planet Earth wants to be an FBA sister. All right. Hands down. They over there with afros. They over there trying to braid their hair, walk and talk like FBA. You can't make that up. You can't find a synthetic version of that. You can't card and copy that. That right there, you only get from right here, from right here, right there, the heart. That's the only place, okay? Either you wake up with that or you ain't got it. Let me tell you something. Certified is born. It's not grown. You can't grow into be a certified foundational black American. You're born that way. And there ain't nothing like a certified foundational black American woman. Certified salute to all of my sisters. And they out here running around. Y'all see what they're trying to do with Beyonce now. Y'all see they got all these country singers and stuff mad at Beyonce, okay? It's that FBA energy, and they can't stand it. But guess what? Like I always say, you ain't got to like it, but you better respect it. And you better respect it because we know you can't check it. But y'all know there was a person running around. I had, I had to play the real sister, okay? I want the real sister to speak so we get that real, 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 real energy, right? Because like I say, a certified foundational black American woman is above all, yes? So there's a lady running around here. And she's trying to talk in a, in, a, in a FBA Southern accent. And she's been running around trying to say that she's FBA. And we done already pulled her card before. But I want y'all to see this. So we already showed you the certified. Now I'm going to show you the counterfeit. We already showed y'all the authentic. Now I'm going to show you the artificial. I've already showed you the real. Now let me show you the fake. Family, look at this person right here, who, by the way, is another tether. And we taking out the trash. Have y'all seen Kamala Harris is running around here trying to talk like our FBA grandmothers? She's trying to talk like our FBA moms? Yes, she is. Listen to this woman speaking out of nowhere, somehow, some way, in a foundational Black American indigenous Southern accent. I ain't lying. <laughs> you know, I was recently with a bunch of um, faith leaders, and I said, you know, I'm good. I, I said to the, the preachers who were there, you know, during announcements on Sunday at church, could you could you perhaps ask people to stand up and say who got their student loan um, forgiven? Because so many have. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Look at the fake mannerisms, y'all. Look at the fake man. I was just sitting there, you know, I'm trying to figure out now what's going on and all this stuff. And da -da -da -da. look at it right here. Look at her cosplaying, y'all. You know, I was recently with a bunch of um faith leaders and I said no you wouldn't you know <laughs> I'm good. I, I said to the, the preachers who were there you know during announcements on Sunday at church could you could you perhaps ask people to stand up and say who got student loan um, forgiven because so many have no uh-uh that ain't gonna fly that ain't gonna fly no 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 uh-uh no Yes, absolutely. Yes, a pandering tether. Yeah, yeah, that's what she's been doing. That's what she's been doing, y'all. She's been running around here trying to talk like a foundational black American. And not only that, she's trying to talk like a foundational black American woman. Yes, yes, she is. Uh-uh, we're not done. We don't hide. We don't run. We ain't here. We on one. You know, party ain't a party if we don't come. Look at this, y'all. Yes, y'all know how to spit some bars real quick. You know what I'm saying? FBA all day. That is not the end of it, fam. She's been doing this a lot lately. She's been running around here speaking with this foundational black American vernacular, trying to cosplay our certified mothers, trying to cosplay our certified grandmothers, 
That is what she's been doing. And you're starting to see it more and more as elections. See, remember the last election, it was about Q-Tip and Fife Dog and Tupac and Snoop. Now it's about Dear Mama. Now it's about Grandma. Because they understand we are heavy in the uh, foundational Black American culture. So they're not hitting us with the hibbity bebop now. We done already rejected that. So now they're starting to send Kamala around so she can try to talk like she's a Feeney Shakur or somebody. Watch this right here, y'all. That's not the first time. Y'all tell me if y'all picking up this fake Southern accent that she's trying to hit us with. And it ain't even good. By the way, y'all already know. Y'all know that mouth open. Y'all, I'm going to leave it alone. Somebody call that brown dude. The, the, no, somebody call up uh, Montel, Montel Williams. Somebody call up Montel Williams. Uh, tell him that she's ready for him. <laughs> Listen. You know, I asked my team to, to you know, I, remember Venn diagrams, those three circles, right? And then let's just see where they overlap. So I asked my team, I said, you know, do a Venn diagram on two circles for me. Um, and, and in particular, the overlap of states that are attacking the freedom to vote and attacking women's freedoms over their own bodies. There are 10 states that are doing both. Here's the point. Our, you know, I asked my team to, to you know, I, remember Venn diagrams, those three circles, right? And then let's just see where they overlap. So I asked my team, I said, you know, do a Venn diagram on two circles for me. Um, and, and in particular, the overlap of states that are attacking the freedom to vote and attacking women's freedoms over their own bodies. There are 10 states that are doing both. Look at what they've been saying, family. Look at this right here. Kamala Harris explains in a fake Southern accent that she asked her team to make these things up. Look at that right there, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, all the way across the board. All the way across the board. She out there talking about something. You know, and then I talked to the to the religious leaders and I told them that what we need to do is this and what we need to do is that. And we need to figure this out. Uh, uh That ain't done. No, 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 fam. I got receipts, man. I got receipts. I got receipts. I got receipts. She's been doing it left and right. I want y'all to see the cosplay. OK, she done did this right here and she acting like she got some goddamn Hennessy and what's up, dog. This is what we talk about. We talk about the yo, yo, yo's and all that. Right. This is what we see with the yo, yo, yo. She's trying to hit us with the same thing. She don't talk like that. She's not a foundational black American. She's not even black. Okay. She's not even black. So when you deal with someone who's not even black trying to come at us from this angle, it already shows you that foundational black American lineage. I'm talking about the roots, the root work. That's what's in right now is us embracing our culture as the whole spectrum. And she can't handle that. This one's the worst one, y'all. And they done messed around in this video and they done put up some goddamn branch and all this stuff and some liquor because that's how she's acting. Watch this right here, y'all, and tell me that this woman is not cosplaying a foundational black American Southern grandmother. I'm pointing to the direction of what I believe is the capital. <laughs> <laughs> and what needs to happen in terms of people who otherwise have evidenced themselves being having a feckless quality to show some courage to reject the false notion that suggests you're either in favor of the Second Amendment or you want to take everyone's gun away when in fact it's just reasonable i support the second amendment but it's reasonable to say we need an assault weapons oh no no hell no hell listen to that. no 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 listen to that i support the second amendment man it's reasonable that we need a benefit bill listen listen take everyone's guns away when in fact it's just reasonable i support the second amendment but it's reasonable to say we need an assault weapons ban it's reasonable to say we need universal background checks look at the fake mannerisms y'all look at the fake who like don't know fba sister stand like that Look at look how she got her hands up and stuff. Don't know FBA sister talk like that. Look how she's sitting there trying to mimic all of our movements, all of our words, fake accents. T terrible, terrible. I support the Second Amendment, but it's reasonable to say we need an assault weapons ban. It's reasonable to say we need universal background checks. That we need red flag laws. It's reasonable to say that if you want to deal with violence in the community. You also got to understand, it's not only about- Whoa, family, listen, she's literally mumbling. This is disrespect. This is what we talk about. This is why we voting for the couch. Listen to the disrespect. She's literally speaking in a broken English. Listen to her right here, family. She mumbled through her words. She don't talk like that. She talk prim and proper. When she be with her W Zaddy every night, 
she be speaking the Queen's English. Listen to her purposely mess this word up. Listen real carefully. Deal with violence in the community. You also got to get to understand. It's what? What the hell? What the? What, what she just say? Y'all also listen to her purposely mess the word up. You also got to get to understand. It's not what? only about mass violence in the community. You also got to get to understand. It's not only about community. You also got to get to understand. Get to understand. It's not only about mass shooting situations, which are horrific. Dolls get in sand. Dolls get in sand. Dolls get in sand. Dolls get in. You also got to get in sand. It's not only about all the gotta hold that stand. What y'all all the gotta hold stand? What the what the hell did what did she just say? I don't know at all. She's trying to say y'all. She's trying to say y'all, but in reality, her non-FBA tether accent is not allowing her to say it the same way we say it. So she fumbled through the word on purpose. Y'all don't understand. She said, y'all don't understand. Y'all do y'all do y'all understand. That's what she said. Y'all do y'all do y'all understand. And she did that on purpose, family. Damn right. That's why that's another tether on the corner like a trash deck. We don't go ahead and took that trash out, boom. And the trash for that one is going to come around in November, and it's going to be even worse. But guess what? Kamala the cop, Mrs. Collie Greens, you are officially on the corner like it's trash day, and it's going to stay that way. Bottom line, point blank, period. Ain't nothing else you can say. You ain't got to like it, but you better deal with it. The hell out of here. Y'all didn't understand. Get out of here. Boy, if you don't stop. If you don't stop, if you don't stop, if you don't stop, family, this is what we're dealing with, y'all. These folks are literally, literally family. These folks are literally trying to mumble through words and trying to speak broken English because in their tether heads, they think that is going to appeal to us. No, the hell it ain't. No, the hell it ain't. None of that. Never, not at all. No, no, no. You better try something different. You better try something different because certified foundational black Americans, we're not going for that game. Never, never will, never have, family. It's a new time, y'all. It's a new time. It's a new era. It's a new generation, one they cannot deal with. But like we always say, family, we're moving along quick, fast, and we're moving so quick and thorough that they're not ready for it. They thought we'd be up by now. They thought we'd say we're done. They thought Foundational Black Americans was going to go ahead and shut it down and chill. No, we're not. Foundational Black Americans, we coming stronger than ever. I'm telling you, if you don't like Foundational Black Americans today, oh, you're going to hate us tomorrow. You're going to hate us tomorrow because guess what? Tomorrow, we're going to be even stronger, even stronger. That's just the way the ball bounces, man. That's just the way the ball bounces. Out here disrespecting our coach and trying to talk like you were certified. Hell to the no. Ain't no way in hell, y'all. Ain't no way. But this is what's been going on, and this is why we've been breaking everybody down, family. This is why we've been calling them all out because they know, like we know, that this time has changed, family. They got opposition. Now, this opposition is very, very strong, very, very thorough, and it's getting stronger by the second. And I love it. Ain't nothing better than being a foundational black American these days. So as we sit here and we say that we delineating, now you got these other communities out here and they're trying to say, well, they're delineating too. Problem is, is nobody wanted to delineate until FBA started to. When foundational black Americans got on this delineation game, when foundational black Americans got on this, we going to do for self game. Now, all of a sudden, everybody else wants to get in on it. That ain't how the game works, y'all. It's all about us. So there's another tether that's been running around. Yep. We're going to go ahead and we're going to call out Fat Joe's little sister. All right. We're going to call this person out. This person's been running around here and they've been tethering on to our community. They've been tethering on to our society. They've been out here trying to act like what they say goes. All right. Now, all of a sudden. People want to go ahead and they want to delineate. But when it comes to our community, they want to have an open door policy. That ain't how it works. Foundational black Americans, we ain't going to have this door open to the whole world. But yet the whole world feels that they can shut it when it comes to their own stuff. No, 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 no. And they all going to find out the hard way. So let me show you all this. Remember when Cardi B. Yeah, we about to go there. As a matter of fact, y'all hold on. Give me one second. One millisecond. Hold up. Wait one second.
Back like we never left. Here we go. Y'all remember when Cardi B, they was trying to mess with my stuff. I'm like, oh, no, no. We got 800 people in here. He's trying to tell me it's only 400. I'm like, ain't no 400. That's 800. Ain't it funny? You stop, you come back, and then boom, they go to 800 again. Check this out. I want y'all to see this. Remember when Cardi B straight up said she can't stop saying the N-word? Remember that? Y'all remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all remember when Cardi B said, I'm not going to stop saying the N-word. I'm going to say the N-word as much as I want to, right? Y'all remember that. Okay. All right. Cool. But it's funny because a lot of that is starting to come back around to her now. Yeah, this is the thing. They think that they can say the N-word whenever they want to, whenever they please. But yet foundational black Americans, we got to go ahead and just accept them. By the way, Jesus, boy, hideous. This is what we're talking about right here. Yeah, Cardi Flea. <laughs> Cardi Flea, absolutely. Listen to Cardi Flea a few years ago saying she couldn't stop saying the N-word. Backlash over like Latinos using the N-word and so forth like that. Like, what's your... Fair use, fair use, fair use, fair use, family. Fair use, YouTube, fair use. Watch this right here. Backlash over like Latinos using the N-word and so forth like that. Like, what's your approach to that? Um... It's just it's something that like is like a lingo. Like even if I want to stop saying it, I really can't stop saying it. Like I'm I'm sorry. Like it seems like it's something that is so normal, which is bad. But like it is what it is. Whoa! It's just it's something that like is like a lingo. Like even if I want to stop saying it, I really can't stop saying it. Like I'm not even if I want to stop saying it, I can't. So basically, I'm not respecting anybody else's culture. Okay, I can do what I want. Then she says, "Sorry." I'm sorry. Like. It seems like it's something that is so normal, which is bad. Okay. All right. Okay. That's that's what it is, right? Okay. All right. This is another tether. This is tether number 15 on this, this episode. All right. Well, after that kind of came out, fam, and she was trying to run that game, right? She was trying to tell folks what they was going to do and what they was going to say and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Just a few days ago, Cardi B came out, and now she's mad because people were calling her Mexican. Look how. The game changes, y'all, when it comes to their culture. When it comes to their culture, now it ain't no, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say what I want to say. Now it ain't no, oh, I can't quit doing it. When we delineate, it's a problem. Because you know why? You know why people got a problem with us delineating? They don't have a problem with delineation. They have a problem with foundational black Americans delineating. And I'm going to tell you why. Because delineating means you cannot get what's ours. Delineating means you can't steal from us. Delineation means you cannot take our culture. They see that as a big, I can't take from FBA. My whole life is based on stealing from FBA. Everything I do is about FBA. And if FBA won't let me steal, I don't know what to do now. But I'll tell you what, everybody can see this clear. Watch how it happens when people start calling her Mexican. And by the way, they was messing with her, putting sombreros on her and everything. Watch this. Language, we have different uh, dialects. We don't eat the same food. We don't eat the same nothing. Call a Nigerian a Niger gay. Call a, 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 a Haitian Jamaican. Call a Jamaican a Haitian. Call, call a guy in a tree. And you tell they're going to. You tell me how they're going to feel. And not only do you. And, 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 and stop playing with me because y'all know that I'm not Mexican. No, and not, y'all do it. No, uh uh. No. I thought you just couldn't quit. I thought everybody can be every. I thought it was all life's matter. I thought it was POC. No, you can't do that. That ain't how the game works. No, no, no. Everybody can say anything. It's funny. Now, all of a sudden, the energy changes. When it comes to stealing from foundational black Americans, you don't care. It's I can't stop. There is no delineation. We got this big open door where you can come on in and say as you please. But the minute somebody starts calling you a Mexican, you want to get mad. Imagine if someone called this to a Nigerian. Imagine if someone called this to a Haitian. Yep, and everybody calls us POCs and blacks and brown. You ain't got no problem with a black and brown. As a matter of fact, y'all remember that big cool groove dude that was dancing around? Cardi B was the main one out there defending him. Saying, uh, that's not that bad. Y'all don't need to get that man banned from TikTok. And now all of a sudden, when it comes crashing down on her community, she don't want to be called Mexican. No, no, no. Cardi B wants to be separate. So delineation, once again, is okay when it comes to your community. But when we simply say you can't be a black American, then all of a sudden it's, that, that's not fair. No, it's extra fair. But y'all do that to, to thing, to irritate me. And not only do y'all call me a Mexican, call me a Mexican. 
So, of course, I'm going to defend myself every single time you guys do it. You're not going to keep erasing my nationalities. You're not going to keep erasing how I am. And I, first of all, I, I, never in my life growing up did I ever heard anybody call me a f again. So Wait a minute. Her nationality? No. Nah. See, you didn't mind trying to be a foundational black American, though. You didn't mind when people was disrespecting foundational black American nationality. Now it's a big problem. No, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to have to say this. I, I, I'm sorry. I, Cardi B, I'm going to have to go ahead and, and big you up. We're going to have to start calling Cardi B. What are we going to call her? We're going to call her, um, let's start calling her, mm, uh, let's say, Mexicano. That's a, have a good one, Cardi Mexicano. Like, well, I, when, when I was coming up, y'all wasn't calling me that. But now y'all do call me that. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to say something about it because it's like, that's not my nationality. That's not what I am. Respect my Like, yeah, everybody wants to get their respected. Stop doing that. I wish I, I wish I was again so I could have the cartel chop your fingers. No, El Chop Ho. No, wait a minute, El Chop Ho. Let, let, let's be real now. I, I, I know. Y'all respect your nationality. You weren't respecting our nationality when you was running around here, bigging up smooth groove, saying the N-word, saying I can't stop. Sorry, y'all just gonna have to deal with it. No, El Chop Ho. No, 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 Tijuana. No, no, no. That's not how it worked, Mekano. Nope, 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 nope. Let's get real here, Cheat and Chong. This is what it is. No, y'all all the same. You ain't going to be separate when you want to be separate. And then all of a sudden, you want to come into the black community and be one of us. Nope. If foundational black Americans is going to play by all rules, then you're going to have to play by all the other rules. That's how it's going to have to be, El Chop Hope. So, uh, whenever I want to. Uh, honey, if I was Mexican, you know the poor I was having in Jalisco, honey. You must be chopped up in the river. Y'all yeah, lucky. I Look at it right there. Look at it right there. Uh huh. Yeah. No. That no. That ain't the case. That ain't the case. No. 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 Miss Tijuana El Chapo. You know what I'm saying? I, I got something though. I got something for her. I got something, family. I have a gift. I told you, I'm, I'm a very gracious individual. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I like to look out for people. Uh, that's just what I do. It's just by my nature. Y'all know we foundational Black Americans. You know, Holden Martin last week was begging for 13 cents a day. You know what I'm saying? I gave him a quarter. You know what I'm saying? I gave him a dollar too. You know what I'm saying? I know all y'all y'all was like, keep that damn dollar. <laughs> yes, I should have, right? You know what I'm saying? So we're gracious people. And since Cardi B can't stop saying the N-word, and since Cardi B wants to be a part of the dominant society, disrespect our side, mind you, when she comes around and she starts doing all of that ratchet, degenerate behavior, she doesn't do that in her own community. You notice that, y'all. People like her, they only come around to our community with ratchet behavior, right? When she goes to the Latin Awards, all of a sudden she on her best behavior then. Hello, all my Latinos and Santiago's. Nice to see you all. It's all good then. When they come around us, it's WAP, right? This is what they do. They know how to find our community and dump the ratchetness in it, right? All these tethers, uh, they know how to dump all their trash into our community. So now what we're doing is on this episode, we taking that trash and we throwing it back. That's why we taking out the trash on this episode. But fam, I want to go ahead. I want to send this to her. This is fresh, man. It just got done cooking, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, Cardi B, I know you cannot stand being called a Mexican. You want to delineate. You want to say the N-word around us. You want to defend disrespect towards us. And you really don't want to be called Mexican, though. You want to delineate, separate your culture. So I know you want to separate your culture. So I had, uh, you know what I'm saying, all my people, man, I had to hook this up for you real quick. So this is for her. You know what I'm saying? This is for you. I I'm giving these to you, Cardi B. Uh, have a good time with your burritos. You feel me? Um, have a great time. Miss Tijuana, Mix Miss Mexicana, Selena. Have a great, great, great time, El Chapo. Uh, It's great. A good Mexican dish for your community. Because, I, you know, I know that's what you are. So that's for you. And I just want to make sure that you enjoy those. Uh, those are fresh right there. Um, I know you said you guys don't eat the same thing. You don't do the same things. Well, uh, apparently you do. So that's for you right there. That's straight from Foundational Black American Certified Black Society. We are very, very generous people. And we don't mind helping you out. Okay? So you don't even have to go anywhere. They're already there. And they're already made for you. So you just have a great, great time enjoying those. And Foundational Black Americans are going to enjoy being exceptional. So that is for you. You consider it a gift. You don't even have to pay us back. You don't. You don't. You don't have to pay us back. You you tell Offset that he can just go ahead and uh, sit this one on out, okay? So have fun with those, okay? Because I know that you don't want to be uh, tied all into the communities and all that. Well, don't consider yourself. 
Don't consider yourself tied in anybody. But I do want you to consider that a gift from foundational black Americans. So you go, you want to go ahead. That's your delineation gift. That's your delineation gift. El Chop Ho. Have a great, 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 great time. And foundational black Americans, we're going to continue to be great, 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 great. And you cannot deal with it. That part, that part, that part, family. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing out here in these streets, y'all. That's what we're doing out here in these streets. They mad. They mad, family. We're giving them gifts. That's what it is. This is what they want. This is what they ask for. And that's all we do. You know what I'm saying? Don't be mad at us because, you know, we're the ones out here, you know, telling people what time it is. We're the ones out here regulating. And, you know, there's a, there comes a whole lot of fun with regulating. G-checking is a great thing. Everybody should uh, go ahead and G-check. This is what happens. When you G-check, you, you might get you some. Yeah, Uber Eats. <laughs> yeah, Uber Eats is coming. We got some Uber Eats for you right there on the table. You know what I mean? And you should definitely enjoy those. You should definitely, definitely enjoy them because they were made uh, specially for someone of your elk. Okay, so have a great, 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 great time, Miss Tijuana. Yeah. So, fam, this is why we separate and that's why we delineate. All these type of people right here, this is why we taking out the trash on all of them. Now, mind you, y'all, they've been running around here trying to tell foundational black Americans what it is and what we should do and all these type of things, fam. But, yo, check this out right here. These people come from communities of that right there. Yeah, let's go, let, let's go there real quick, fam. You know when it comes to being black and proud, foundational black Americans are the only ones who really stand on being black. You feel me? Let's be real. Cardi B, all these other folks, they come over here to the United States of America because they want to get in with the dominant society. That is what they want. They all see the dominant society as their friends and they see us as the enemy. I don't care about the three tellers who say we're not all like that. The dominant society been telling us they're not all like that for years. OK, you are all like that until further notice. And the ones who are not good, you will go ahead and stand out. All right. But now when you start seeing these type of people coming around here with that type of energy, we got to be real. Foundational black Americans are the only people who do not run from this. And if you do run from that family what do we do y'all we completely dismiss and we stay away from those type of individuals we have been standing on blackness for years they have been running up from blackness for years there's a big difference between the two of those when you stand on being black you're proud to be black you get those results they've been out here cake soaping it up left and right everywhere you go and family if people do not believe me i did a little research Let's go ahead and look at the main places where cake soap and skin bleaching is prominent. I found some real, real disturbing, uh, disturbing evidence of where cake soap and skin bleaching is sold the most and who are the biggest participants in the skin bleaching trade. And I'm telling you right now, family, it's not foundational black Americans. It's not certified black society. Let me tell you all this as well. And I've been wanting to share this with y'all. Family. I travel around Georgia a lot. Oh, please bear with me. Y'all, y'all going to hear this story. Please. I've been sitting on this for a minute. I travel around Georgia a lot. I go to a whole bunch of different small towns in the state of Georgia. Family, can any of y'all tell me what flag is that? What flag is that? I'm not sure. I'm not. I, I don't know all the flags, family. What flag is that in Africa? Please, please tell me. Please tell me. I mean, whatever y'all say, I, I need to know because I'm, I'm extremely curious on this flag right here because okay oh is that jamaica is that jamaica okay what is that what is that what is that i need confirmation i need confirmation okay because family the disturbing news has got even more disturbing all right why while i'm traveling through georgia i came across a restaurant this picture was taken by me by the way i took that picture personally family how come I'm traveling through Georgia and I see a damn restaurant and the damn restaurant is an, it says an African restaurant and it's called Massas. Look at the damn name of it. Look at the name of it. I'm not lying, y'all. The damn restaurant is called Massas. Massas in Georgia. Y'all know there ain't a Southern black American that's going to name anything Massa. Is it Cameroon? Is that what it? Okay. Okay. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it, which one is it? I'm getting a lot of different names. Okay. It, a fact that we see these different names, y'all, that lets you know that this is very prevalent. Is it Senegal? 
Okay, camera, I'm getting a lot of different ones. Okay, but we can all agree that that is from Africa, okay? That is an African ref. <laughs> I see you, Sage. I see you. I'm not lying, Sage. I'm not lying, brother. That is real. I took that picture, y'all. The damn restaurant's name is Massa, and it is in the deep south of Georgia. Please screenshot that right there, y'all. I'm not lying. That is in the middle of the dirty, dirty south, y'all. And they literally have a damn restaurant called Massa's. And they walk around like ain't nothing wrong. They was in there just throwing Joel off in the sky and catching it in their mouth. False. This is what we talking about. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I'm not lying, y'all. Sad day. When we say these tethers are so far gone, you can't reel them back in. That's what we mean. When we say that they done tether themselves insane, that's what we mean. When we say we are not the same, that's what we mean. You would never in your life see a foundational black American name anything massless. You damn sure would see it right down the street from a damn plantation. Never. This is what you get when you deal with these people. When we delineate, when we separate, we ain't letting nobody tell us different because of that right there, family. Sad, sad, sad day. You got a tether who came here from Africa to the south where we were on the plantations being whooped and beaten by the slave Massa. And an African comes here and he names his restaurant Massa. I'm done, y'all. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. The people have spoken. Y'all know what it is. Anytime, I'm going to say this. This is a little word to the wise, y'all. Anytime y'all see something like that, guarantee inside the owners, you're going to see something like this. Watch it. Watch it, y'all. I'm telling you, let's be 115 up in here. You going to see that right there. Anytime you see masses right here, when you see this, you're going to see that. When you see that, you're going to see this and guarantee all of them. You can tell them this right here. You can't lie. You can't lie. You can not lie. Damn shame. And I'm not making it up. I wish I was. I promise y'all. And I stopped right because I was out. I was just rolling. I was rolling. I stopped. And I, I doubled back. I was like, oh, hell no. I pulled out my phone. I was like, I got to put this up. The family got to see this one. And it really, really true. They really have a restaurant and it's really called Masters and it's in the Deep South family. Damn shame. Damn shame. Damn shame. Yes. And, you know, this, this is type of things that you see. We've talked about skin, skin bleaching. Family, look at this lady right here. Look at her right here. You know, they, they love they bleaching. Look at that. Look at her. This is it right there, family. Fair use, fair use, fair use. That right there. That lady wasn't born in that color. I, I, matter of fact, she might be the owners of Masses. Who knows? Maybe, maybe that's her cousin. You know what I'm saying? Look at that right there. This is what you see when you see these things. Fair use, fair use, fair use. This is what happens, y'all. This is who they try to tell us that we are all one, brother. Look at Jesus. Oh, goodness. Look at that. Look at that. And I'm not even going to play the audio because I'm not even going to deal with that. But family, let me just tell you this. Do y'all know that she's saying how her mind was colonized and bleaching is a bad thing? But as she's saying bleaching is a bad thing, it don't stop her from doing the hair the same way. No, the hell it don't. No, no, hold on. I got to pull that back up. I'm sorry, y'all. I got to pull that back up one more time. I got a point to make about that one. This is what we saying with these people, y'all. This is what we saying. You cannot win with masses. You cannot win uh, with skin bleaching like that. They swimming in cake soap. I'm telling y'all, they are so deep in cake soap, family. There is no turning around. They can't come back from it. They out there doing backstrokes in cake soap. All right. And they all do. These people have got to the point, y'all, where foundational black Americans, even if we want it to reach out to these people, and mind you, we have for years tried to reach out to these people, scam Africanism, foundational black Americans tried to assist, tried to help, tried to be on their side. They rejected it because they felt that they'd rather cake soap. They chose cake soap, okay, over helping out foundational black Americans. They chose cake soap over 
being one on the same page with us. They chose cake soap over dealing with everybody else. So since that's what they did, it's only right that we do what we choose, and that is to delineate, to delineate, and to separate. And I believe that the separation is so strong right now, family, that they realize there's nothing that they can say and nothing that they can do, and now they just have to deal with the reality, and that reality is if you chose cake soap over black empowerment, then foundational black Americans are going to choose black empowerment by our goddamn selves, sir over you if they ever want to see what being real and standing on business and actually caring about your lineage heritage and culture then they can come talk to us until then uh, she can do all of that and uh casper's casper the friendly tether <laughs> can go ahead and have a great goddamn time being such yes indeed but family that's not the only thing i want to show y'all we rock we good, man. I got time today. I got time today, family. We said we're taking out the trash, right? It's not a one-day thing. Check this. I said that I got some real receipts, right? Look at this, y'all. They chose cake soap over black empowerment? Absolutely. Absolutely. Look at this right here. I actually have the numbers of where, because I've been doing some real, real deep, extensive research right here on the Black Alpha Network. I have real, 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 real extensive research on where cake soap is predominantly sold in the top countries. What you're going to see is cake soap in skin bleaching products because there's all types of them okay there's actually they say an estimated 233 of them bleaching products you're going to see every country but what you ain't going to see is foundational black america look at this in 2012 indians reportedly consumed an estimated 233 um basically uh tones of bleaching products that's indians and in terms of sheer numbers, Indians make up the largest skin uh, bleaching market. In some African cities, as many as 52 to 77 of the women use skin lighteners. One more time. These are statistics of skin bleaching. These ain't folks who just come around. In some African cities, as many as 52 to 77 percent of women use skin lighteners. OK, the market survey in 2004 showed that 50 percent of the respondents in the Philippines reported using skin lighteners. That's 50 and 72. And then on top of that, that's another 50 for the Philippines. And not to mention, they said the Indians do it the most, okay? In places like Japan, China, Taiwan, and Korea, global surveys suggested that 20 to 50% of the respondents had used skin bleaching and that 20 to 50% would use more if they could afford it. They want more. Mercury-laden creams are also widely available in parts of Latin America. Family. What you did not see on that whole thing was foundational black Americans. You seen all of these other places. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let nobody try to be like, we all do it. It's what we all do. Because what people like to do, family, they like to take all of their dirty laundry and they want to spread it around. They want us to put their dirty jacket on. We don't wear that. They want us to put on their dirty shirt. We don't wear that. They want us to put on they dirty, um, nah, I'm not going to say that. Let me not say that, okay? I'm going to leave that one alone. There's a lot of things that they have that is dirty is what I'm trying to tell y'all, that they want foundational black Americans to use and foundational black Americans reject it. We are not going for it. We are not picking cake soap over our brothers and sisters, okay? That is not happening. And they're mad that we have the evidence, we got the facts to show how much they've been using their cake soap and loving their cake soap. Yes, they have. But family, I want y'all to see this as well. This is just more tether action. So not only do you have the cake soap, not only do you have them doing backstrokes in cake soap, you got people out there trying to get us to leave America. That's the goal. That's the goal. We broke down tethers here. We broke down tethers, family. We don't broke them down to the T. But the main thing that I want to stress about tethers the most, y'all, is tethers want to be foundationals. They want us to leave. They want us to put down our foundational black American flag so they can pick it up. They want us to put down our black heritage flag so they can pick it up. They want us to put down our American flag so they can pick it up. Why was everybody so mad at Beyonce? They were so mad at Beyonce because they want that flag that she's holding. They want that same black American foundation 
foundational black American, just American flag for themselves. So now they've been telling us, y'all leave America and then we'll just come over to America. And then they realized they couldn't do that straightforward because everybody talks at us in triangles because they know coming at us direct, they're going to get checked. So what they've been doing now, they've been saying, well, blacks, y'all should do this, that, and this, and that, and that over there too. No, 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 no. You can't have my flag because you ain't built my country. You cannot have my country because you're not native and indigenous to this country. But you can't have your village, and you can't have your jollof, and you can't have your curry chicken biscuits. If you want that, have it because we don't want it. Watch this guy right here, y'all. Look how he is trying desperately to get foundational black Americans. He look like he already trying to sell us something. Look how he desperately trying to get us to go back home so he can make our home his. Try again, Mother Teller. So Sierra Leone just gave citizenship to dozens of African-Americans and people within the diaspora. I keep telling you guys this. Welcome home. Come back home. We are waiting for you. You don't even have to move permanently. Just go and visit. Go and visit. Africa is for you to enjoy. It's your place. It's your land. I, I don't know how many times. Actually, no matter how many videos I make on this topic, it's never going to be enough videos because there's been decades and centuries of brainwashing. We love you guys so much. I'm in the U.S. right now, but I want to go back. No, no, uh-uh. No, no. No, Mr. Mutombo. Don't jump over that, Mr. Mutombo. No, no. No, go back, Mr. Mutombo. Don't slide over that point. Notice, fam, when they start talking about where he at, he threw that in quick. He said, go home, brother. Brother, you have home. Home in the village. Village across the water well. And there's giraffes here. We got giraffes and jollof. You can come back home. You can go on the other side of the desert. I'm all right here in America, but no, uh-uh. No, 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 no. It ain't going to be, brother, come home, even though I'm living in Atlanta. No, 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 no. Run that back, Mr. Mutombo. Say how you really feel. Where are you again? Decades and centuries of brainwashing. We love you guys so much. I'm in the U.S. right now, but I want to go back to Africa and build a big-ass house. You ain't going back to Africa. You done got here to the United States of America and your ass is trying to replace us. Try again, Mr. Mutombo. Just to host people within the diaspora, I swear. Like, you guys are you guys are so welcome. This is your place. This is your land. This is this is your land for you to enjoy. Like, wait, forget about all the false information that was taught to you. It's false. The information is false. I guarantee you it's false. You guys are so loved. You guys are so loved. You guys. No, the information is correct. You the one who's false. You guys are so loved and so admired in Africa, bro. All across Africa. Come back home. You, we are waiting for you. You don't have to live there permanently, but just go visit. Just come home. Enjoy the food. Enjoy the culture. You think you will stick out like a sore thumb? I guarantee you, you're going to be walking around seeing a bunch of morphos that look like your uncle, your aunt, your mom, your cousin, your brother, your sister. Everybody looks like you. Stop, 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 stop. Y'all been seeing that everybody looks like y'all. Y'all been seeing that, right? That's what they're literally doing right now on social media. Africans are running around here trying to tell us we look like y'all. We look like y'all. Notice, fam, that's not coming from us to them. We are minding our own business, driving down that FBA highway on the way to the bank, doing us, right? And you got these people popping up, telling us go home, do that. And now there's this whole thing of y'all look like us. And they're literally trying to get to the point. Fam, they have reached... Desperate level 150, cold red, okay? They are in panic mode. They done smashed the panic button, y'all. They want us to come home so bad. What they're doing is running around and they're putting up pictures, all right? It'll be like Usher next to Mr. Mutombo. They'll be like, look at Usher and Mr. Mutombo. They look so much alike, don't they? Look at Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett looked just like my auntie, Miss Joloff. Miss Joloff looked just like Angela. That means you should come home, brother. No, 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 no. Uh-uh, no, nice try. You're not literally, you're trying to literally tell us that we look alike, so we should come home. If you don't stop. First off, they don't want to admit the foundation of Black Americans from thousands of years of indigenous culture, from thousands of years of ancestral presence. We have developed our own uh, phenotypes, and we have went through an ethnocide that created that. That is the DNA portion that they're not ready for because they're not intelligent enough. But that's okay. The other side of that is the fact that you want to tell me I look like you to come home when your whole continent is full with people who look like you. Let me tell you who else looks like you. The person in the village, but you ain't friends with him, though. The person who comes from the diaspora, you ain't friends with him, though. 
the people who come from America, you hate us when we get there. Who's the only people who done ever went to Africa and Africans rejected? Black Americans. They reject black folks, but they love all the other colonizers. Every single other group has colonized them. So basically, they welcome everybody else in with open arms. We get met with resistance. So no, Mr. Mutombo, you can go ahead and stay home. You have a whole continent of people who look alike but hate each other. And yet you want to come to us and say, come home because we look alike. What we've realized with y'all is that most of y'all do not identify with black and the majority of you guys hate people who do look like you. So that is all the recipe of us not going to Africa. And by the way, we don't have to go home because we're already home. And speaking of already home, I want y'all to see this as well, family, because we cook it. Can I show y'all? Can I please, please, please show y'all all of, if this loads up, low, low, low. Look at that, family. That right there. Those are the billionaires in Africa. I'm not lying to you. Look at that. What is the coincidence that you see? What's the denominator that you guys see right there? Family, somebody let me know right now. The Billionaires Club of Africa. Yes, that is it. I only see one, two, three, four, five, maybe five or six. One guy, I'm not really sure. That is the Billionaires Club. The 20 richest people in Africa in 2024. And the damn flag looks like the United Nations. That is Africa for you right there. Come on. That's what you want us to come home to. That's what you want. In reality, you want us to bring our money over there. That's what it is. You want us to bring our foundational black American money so you can moot off of our foundational black American money. And to be honest with you, a lot of brothers and sisters go over there and they do not make it back home. Nice try, Mr. Mutombo. Because when I'm looking at all of these people from Africa, what I see, fam, is a whole bunch of people who's getting money in Africa, but it ain't the Africans. How come the people getting money in Africa aren't African? I thought that you guys all got along. I thought we all friends. I thought we was all buddies. Hold up. Wait a minute. You know what? I'm cooking right now. But y'all know since, is, since this is the Black Alpha Network and we is one big family, we riding. I love this comment right here. Thank you so much for this comment. We want to know where's Oprah Winfrey, right? Oprah Winfrey? Okay. All right. This is Black Alpha Network, man. Y'all know we are not scripted. We are just one big foundational Black American family tree. We talk like it's the reunion, right? This is how we go. Good, good, good question. Because we've been wondering, where is Oprah Winfrey, right? Did y'all remember this right here? Appreciate that comment, by the way. That is the perfect segue. You just threw me in alley-oop. Look at that right there. Hold up. Speaking of tethers, speaking of Oprah Winfrey, let's look what Oprah Winfrey and this tether have been doing. Whoa. Look at that right there, y'all. Oprah Winfrey, she seemed like she had been snuggling up real good to Emmanuel Ocho. Yeah, and speaking of Ajho, you feel me? Let's go ahead and slide off on that right there, family. So Africa, billionaires are all W's. Africa does not get along with their own people. We're not falling for your lies. Nice try, Mr. Mutombo. Take that shit back to the village. Now let's talk about this one right here. This ultra extreme tether, okay? This guy right here, y'all know that he been hating on every certified foundational black American sister out there, right? We have exposed that. But y'all see that he's been getting a whole lot of love, and he was getting a whole lot of love from Oprah, Okra Winfrey. Yeah, it seems as if Oprah was one of the main ones putting that battery in the back. Look at that right there. Ain't it funny how? Ain't it funny how? The same guy who was running around here talking all that. What that is, family, they say they published an uncomfortable conversation uh, with the black man. This is what they was talking about. He was having that conversation. Remember that one where he was talking to all the W police officers? Yeah. A lot of people don't know. Oprah sponsored that. That was from Oprah. Yeah, that was from Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey is the one who teamed up, tag team, teamed up with this tether, all right, and created all of this. The one that was trying to elevate him as the black man. This is what we always do. The one thing, if you want to spot a tether family, always see who is the person that they're trying to elevate as a spokesperson for foundationals, right? They try to give us Buster Rhymes with that legacy tour. When his legacy is trash, we exposed it. But we weren't going to let him be seen as some type of hip-hop legend. No, 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 not happening. And this guy, Oprah included, was trying to make him some type of 
black man, spokesperson, even though he's a tether off code as hell. This is what Oprah was trying to push. And y'all know they run to Oprah, and that's the first one they go for. Yeah. Let's talk about Acho, a Nigerian-American who was born in Dallas. The Igbo immigrants. Uh Uh-huh. Dr. Sonny and Christy Acho. Y'all know about these first, second, third generation tethers, right? We've been talking about them for a long time. This is why it's good and it's very important that we delineate. Yes, we must delineate now because you're going to start seeing all of these different tethers coming in from all these different communities and they're going to start having all their little kids and them are going to be the tethers of tomorrow. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start raising some delineators of tomorrow. Oh, I pulled out Holy Martin's parents last week. We found out that Roland Martin last week, who's a tether, Roland Martin's father, Roland Sr., he is the son of him, and Roland went bankrupt, and we put out the receipt of that. That right there is Ocho's parents. So this is what you get. Family, I thought these people was war-torn. I thought these people was coming from these bad places. I thought these people were struggling, and they need to come to America for a better life. No, these folks are doctors. And they come into the United States of America so they can get in on our creations. These folks are not struggling, people. These folks are well-to-do. Don't we say that the dominant society, when you start talking about all types of immigration, we say that the first thing they do is they go around and they recruit people who are well-to-do And they bring them over here and elevate them above foundational black Americans. Yes, the hell they do. And this is what you get with this guy right here. This guy's parents are well-to-do folks. And they come over here and they taught them all that. What the talk? You stay away from black Americans. Don't you speak to them. They're no good. Y'all know the same talk that we done seen other people, the writers from there, okay? The writers have told us what these people do what these people say. So now we know what really goes on over there, okay? And these are the ones who've been telling their kids, stay away from foundational black Americans. Don't talk to foundational black Americans. In my homeland, I'm a doctor. In my homeland, your mama's a nurse. In my homeland, we got all these good things. When you get over there, stay away from their copter. And then next thing you know, we're going down the timeline. Let's, Let's do what we do when we do what we do. You got those parents right there who are first generation tethers. Those first generation tethers, they give birth to this second generation tether. And that second generation tether starts disrespecting certified foundational black American sisters like our sister, Angel Reese. This is what we talk about. We all know what he was saying when he was running his mouth about our sister. We all know that, right? We seen it. But family, a lot of people don't know that they've been running around here doing the same exact thing to a lot of different sisters. I put up a tweet the other day. Let me see if I can pull it up right now. And I'm telling y'all, the tethers and the supremacists came out the woodwork. They were so mad. They were like, damn you, Black Alpha, and you FBAs are so bad. Because there's one thing you notice. Let me say this, fam. Y'all notice that when you deal with these tethers, they got a lot of spite. A lot of jealousy, a lot of envy, a lot of vitriol, a lot of hatred for foundational black Americans. That is very, very, very true. But y'all know they've been hating our sisters for a long time. Yeah, because you got to understand in their homelands, they treat their women like trash. When they come over here, they see our sisters are certified, stand on business. Matter of fact, I'll go as far to say our black American women are stronger than all the other men on the planet Earth. I don't give a damn where you're from. I don't give a damn where you're from. You could be from any of these little tethered places. They can't stand up next to our women. I mean, if you look at it, look at the system of supremacy and going against the system of supremacy. There's only one woman who's ever fought supremacy. That's a certified foundational black American woman. So when you start dealing with these people from these tethered homelands where they just disrespect their women, shut up, Mrs. Joloff. You make Joloff, you get in the kitchen. And then they come and deal with our sisters from St. Louis. They deal with our sisters from New York City. They deal with our sisters from South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, the West Coast, everywhere, everything in between, Chicago, Cleveland. When they deal with our sisters, they're not ready for that. So they got this little spite and jealousy against foundational black American women. So this is where a lot of that Acho stuff is coming from. His little hatred for our good sister, Angel Reese. Look at this. I put this up. I said, 
There is nothing tethers hate more than seeing two excellent foundational black American women win. Okay. Our sister, Carrie Richardson and Angel Reese. And fam, let's be real. A lot of the hatred that they were dealing with were coming from tethers. Let's be real. Let's be real. Let's say what it is. Let's not pull no punches, family. This was a lot of the hatred that they were receiving, and it was coming from them. I'm telling y'all, because they are completely jealous that our foundational black American women have done more in the whole history of the planet Earth than they have. Yes, indeed. Your wife, your mama, your cousin, your daughter, your grandmother has done more to stop, to fight and dismantle the system of white supremacy and bring in black empowerment more than any man in the diaspora, any man south of America, north of America, in the far east and the far west. FBA sisters got them all beat. So this is where you see all of that jealousy, that spite, that hatred. This is where it comes from. Everybody knows it. So this is why this guy not only has been hating on our good sister, this man also has been hating on Shakari Richardson as well. Look at this right here, family. A lot of people don't know. Before he started going in and disrespecting our sister, Angel Reese, he was talking crazy about Shakari Richardson. Let's be real. When you start talking about foundational black Americans, let me see this clearly. Let me get this up. When you start talking, about foundational black American excellence right now in sports. Our sisters are dominating, okay? You got Angel Reese, okay? You have Shakari Richardson. They're dominating their sports. I don't care what nobody else says. And then on top of that family, you also have our good sister Clarissa Shields, all right? Foundational black American woman as well, right? Sisters are dominating in basketball. They're dominating in track and field. And sisters are dominating in boxing. You can make the case that the best boxer in the world right now is our sister Clarissa Shields, as well as Javante Davis and a bunch of other brothers. But our sister, you can say, is the best pound for pound. Our good sister, Clarissa Shields, if you're familiar with her, let me say this. The girl is undefeated and has a goddamn gold medal, and you don't hear her ever embrace. If a W woman had a bronze medal, she'd be everywhere, okay? If a W woman had a goddamn lavender medal, and they don't even make them, or an off-brown medal, she'd be everywhere. Clarissa Shields is undefeated with a goddamn gold medal, all right? And if I'm not mistaken, she's the last American man or woman to gold at the Olympics. So what are we talking about? What are we talking about? They don't embrace her because she's a foundational black American sister, and she's dominating. They don't embrace Angel Reese because she's dominating, and she has that FBA-certified energy. She got that real certified energy. Certified energy is different. When you got that certified creed, you represent a whole different style. You walk with a whole different bop. That's what they do not like. Same thing with our sister Shakari Richardson. They want us to have these people who win and just bow down. Ain't happening. So this man was running around here, and he said this about our sister a long time ago, way before he started hating on Angel. He said, you can tell people they got to see me in a race and then be behind them the whole time. He said, you can't tell people they got to see me in a race and then behind them the whole time. They literally can't see you. This is what he said after Richardson finished last. Y'all remember when our sister was having some hard times. Our sister was having some difficult times and they were hating on her, right? This is what was happening. And our sister did what? Our sister bounced all the way back. But he was hating on Shakari way before Shakari, however she pronounces it, uh, much respect, sweetheart. He was hating on her before it was Angel. He went out of his way. This had nothing to do with anything. Our sister had a bad race, came back, bounced back, and he literally said, you can't tell people they got to see Nate, and then you're behind them, and they can literally can't see you. This man is a full-fledged tether hater, and he has a problem with foundational Black American women because he comes from an anti-woman background. Then look at this, family. He says, wow, Shakari Richardson just ran a 10.57, the fourth fastest women's 100 meter ever. Now, all of a sudden, when she won, he started trying to flip flop. Then he started trying to get on the foundational black American woman train. He started trying to say, oh, man, she ran so fast. Hold up now. Wait one second. Y'all got to give her some love. No, uh, uh, you was just hating. What did Angel Reese just say, family? She said, make sure that apology is as loud as that hate. This is what we're talking about. 
He did the same exact thing to Sha'Carri Richardson because he is a tether hater. And deep down inside, he wishes he was a foundational black American. He probably wishes he was an FBA woman, but he can't be because he ain't strong enough. This is what we're dealing with, y'all. Look at this as well. This is when he was hating on our good sister. So one minute is all of that. All of that disrespect, talking reckless, talking crazy. And then you want to turn around and say, well, hold on now. I'm sorry. I apologize. Let me go talk to Oprah. Yeah, he'll like people like Oprah. He ain't got no problem with Oprah. Oprah would be his best friend. Oh, yeah, he'll rock with Oprah all day, every day, twice on Sundays. But he'll never, ever say anything good about an on-code sister. An on-code sister is what really terrifies these people. It makes them petrified because they understand they can't get off none of that nonsense that they do with everybody else when you're dealing with someone who is on code like we are, like our two sisters are. This is what has them scared. This is what has them shook. So, no, we're not falling for none of that. You can go ahead and take all that back to your homeland with your big ass forehead as well, family, because y'all know like I know and the whole damn world knows. When foundational black Americans step in the building, these people have no choice. All they do is they run and hide. They go back to their village. And this is why we are delineating and separating. He thought that this was the yes, we can era. He thought that he was going to come around and disrespect our sisters and everybody was going to give it a pass. No, we were not. And guess what, family? He had to go with his tail tucked between his tether legs and he had to go and make an apology and say, I'm sorry for everybody who just told me that I was wrong. I apologize. And I'm not even going to play his apology. I'm not even going to play his apology. Nah, 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 nah. Because it ain't real and it ain't genuine. I'm not going to play his apology. What I do know for sure, two things for certain family, is that he has been running around here talking that talk. And FBA, we don't accept your apology, quite frankly, because we don't accept you. And when we don't accept you, your apology goes the same exact way. These people can say and do whatever they want. They can continue to hate on what we've created, but we're going to continue to regulate on all of these tap dancers. So for him, this is what his family did. And he can accept it or not. That's what your family done did. That's who your family is. That's what your family will always be. You are somebody who came here because your parents could not afford you the opportunity to live in the life that we have. So therefore, you got to run in, you got to hide in, you got to skip in, you got to jump in. And foundational black Americans ain't never did none of that. And you cannot stand it. This is what we deal with with these people. And this is why delineation is the most powerful thing. You got it all the way across the board, all the way across the board. Look at this. Y'all remember Joy? Let's talk about Joyless Reed. Joyless Reed, same exact thing. Uh-huh. Whether you like it or not, immigrants built America and make it run. Look at that. Joyless Reed with her Fleetman forehead. Same exact thing. She was running around here saying those lies as well. Foundational black Americans ain't rocking with her. Foundational black Americans have put her all the way out the building. One more. This is what they're doing right there with Juneteenth. Look at Juneteenth, y'all. This is what they're trying to sell us for Juneteenth. And Juneteenth, they're trying to give us that. This is why it is so important that we all meet up in Washington, D.C. for the Juneteenth celebration and the rally for reparations family. And we show out and we show and prove so we can show everybody that that is not a representation of Juneteenth. We are the representation of Juneteenth. And they cannot say anything about it. They cannot do nothing about it. That's just what it is. More. That's right here. Angela Cry. All right. Her people are not from America. I think where are her people from? She, she got Caribbean, right? If I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, Angela Cry, this is another. We put all of them on the Tether Summer Jam screen. We put all of them on the Tether Jumbotron. Yeah. Let's talk about how Angela Cry, that was her zaddy. And she just came out a few weeks ago and said she was treated badly by him. And he came, he texted her a picture. And he said, oh, this is how you look in a bikini. And now she's coming out saying, oh, I'm so sorry. It hurt. No, you was zaddying it up. Look at this right here. Look at this right here, family. I thought that she was upset. I thought that Angela cried was upset. Okay, if she was upset, wait, whoa, 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 Okay, I'm going down the list. We got them, family. We done already G-checked Buster Ron, G-checked Cardi B, G-checked Flav Joe, G-checked Amach Ho. Yes, we did. We even delivered some butter biscuit burritos for Cardi B. Now, look at Angela Cry. She was coming out a few weeks ago, and she was saying that she was sexually harassed by Como on CNN. She is non-FBA as well. 
And then guess what, family? Boom. We can pull out right there and see, oh, no, you was Kiki and Ha Ha. You were showing all your tether teeth because she is another non-FBA. And she was running the gambit trying to tell foundational black Americans what it is and what foundational black Americans needs to do. Uh-uh. No, we got it all. None of these tethers, fam. All tethers, we see them together. Let's put that one more time. All tethers, we see them together. You're not going to be a tether. Come around foundational black Americans and start trying to separate yourself. That's what they do. What they do, fam, they like to come around us and separate themselves. See, they know now that we're on to them. That's what it is. They know now we're on to all of their little tether moves. So what they do, fam, they come out and they try to flip flop. They be like, well, um, we not all the same. We all have different things. That's what Cardi B was trying to do. Cardi B was trying to separate herself from all the other tethers in her community. That's what it is. Angela Cry, she's been doing the same exact thing. Same exact thing. And she's been running around here looking at this. Family, tell me, is this right here not the moistest thing you've ever seen in your life? Okay. Tiffany Cross, Angela Cry, and Gillum. Look at this. This is their little podcast they've been running around here trying to speak on foundational black Americans, trying to talk on our business. And we know for a fact Angela Cry is non-FBA, so that is another non-FBA. And let's not forget, when you deal with her, you're dealing with the same person that was running around here trying to tell FBA that we was Russian bots. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Let's look at this real quick. Let's look at this. This is a little something, something I done put together for the family. Look at this right here. Why don't you go help your people in Haiti and wherever them folks is from? Watch her right here flip-flopping all over the place. This is another. This is a political tether. We done already got rid of the hip-hop tethers. We done got rid of the sports tethers. Tether, 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 regulate, 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 taking out the trash. Many of you, I have been traumatized by the images of Haitian migrants crossing the border or trying to cross the border to the tune of 14,000 people who just suffered an earthquake recently in Haiti, who just witnessed a presidential assassination in Haiti, seeking refuge in these United States of America. And in return, they get whips like the border patrol is the damn overseer at somebody's plantation who put money in the federal budget for cbp to have whips that's not humane activity that's not humane behavior that's not how we should children in a country that is so big on especially on the and she was going in on all the tethers and then she said well um wait a minute now let, let, let's talk about um the, the, the conservatives. This is what they always got to do. They always got to spin it back on the conservatives, fam. That's just how they operate. No, go over there. See, look, she's well, on that Caribbean tip. How come all the Democratic shields are always out here defending the diaspora, but they never defend foundational Black Americans? Y'all notice that. That's because the majority of them are not FBAs. Think about it. Barack Obama, Kamala Harris, the White House press secretary, Angela Cry, these are all non FBA tethers, and they've all been running around here trying to get foundational black Americans to fight for everybody else other than foundational black Americans. This right here is your political tether. We get rid of the political ones the same way we get rid of the social ones. It does not matter what side of tethering you come from. You tether, you will get G checked. We will G check you in person, we will G check you to your face. We will G-check you everywhere. If that's the way it has to play out, that's the way it will play out. We do not take any shorts or losses in this generation. Why? Because we do not have to. These folks know better, and if they don't know better, they will now. That's the way we're moving. That's the way we're pushing along. Yes, indeed. So watch that right there. She's running around here, family. She's trying to get foundational black Americans to get on board with this, that, and the other thing. But it's funny, though, because she wasn't the only one that was coming out here talking reckless, talking crazy. No, 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 no. We got to watch them because, you know, it's election season. So they're going to start spinning these people around, trying to put these people back in our face, trying to get us to get on board with their little issues and all that. No, 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 no. And it's more and more of the, you, you black Americans need to do this, and you black Americans need to come here. Look at this guy right here, fam. I want y'all to see this dude. Watch this guy right here. This is another one of those hairliners, okay? All right? And he's running around here trying to get foundational black Americans on board with whatever he's trying to play, but we're not playing those games. Check this out right here. This is another tether. Look at this. Tell me now, family, 
All these people crashing out. Damn right they're crashing out. Watch this. Look at this. He said, watch this. If you're moving to Africa. If you're trying to move to Africa, don't make this mistake. I naively believe that the local Africans will look at me as one of their brothers. But that was far from the case. To the average African, I was nothing more than a money bag. Now, this is not me saying that Africans are. Look at this right now. He's telling everybody straight up and down that they see you as a money bag when you get over there. That's just the way they operate and the way they function. Bad, but rather this is me informing you so you don't make the same mistake that I did in treating someone who sees you as an outsider, as family. I have an African relocation guide linked in my bio. If you're, if you're trying to move to Africa. These people do not see you as one of the same. These people see you completely different. And that's what he's saying. And if you want to see them, first thing you got to do is you got to have your how to spot a tether guide. Okay? You got to have it. There's a bunch of different guides that you can have. But the first thing you got to do, family, you got to know what to look for. Look for first the crooked wig. If you see that crooked wig, all right, you on to something. You on to something. Then after you see the crooked wig, family, you got to go ahead and look for the Fleedman forehead. If you see that Fleedman forehead, you really on it. And then that all leads you to the tether hairline. If you can see any of those, then guarantee you, you have spotted a tether. And once you spot a tether, just know, family, they're going to throw every single lie they can come up with. They're going to have some obsession with you going home because really they have an obsession with getting the flag from you. And they'll be the first ones waving it in the sky. Trust me, fam. If they got black Americans to go home, and they got foundational black Americans to leave. Uh, they'd be over here in America talking about, we are the ones who built America. They say they built America not. You feel me? So this is what we are talking about. These people by no means represent us and by no means do they stand by us. And there's nothing wrong with delineating. There's nothing wrong with separating. And the first thing you got to do when you do it, family, you got to know how to spot a tether. Once you can spot a tether, you done seen it all. Once you done spotted a tether, you done got it all. And right now, family, we got the whole game in a headlock. Yes, indeed. All right, family. Y'all know it's been a hell of an episode, man. I said we was going to get them. I said we was going to get them. I said we was going to get them. It's foundational black Americans. We was going to put it all the way down, and we're going to take out the trash, and they all done got G-Check. We done took out the trash. Yes, we have. Family, 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 if you can, man, I want to see the whole family in Washington, D.C. I want to catch all of you guys right there at the Rally for Reparations. I want to see all of you guys at the Juneteenth celebration. I cannot wait to be there. Certify salute to everybody in advance, man. Certify salute to all of y'all. Please go to Rally for Reparations, the website, .com, family. Please donate, donate, donate if you can, man, because this is all sponsored by the Black Grassroots. Nobody else, you guys. Nobody else. It is all of us. This is our creation. This is all about us. And I guarantee you, man, we are going to take over this whole summer. We're going to take over the whole city and we're going to take over the whole country because it already belongs to us. Tethers, beware. Fleers, beware. Blenders, beware. We are in the building in the place. Yes, fleeing and forehead. <laughs> There's a whole lot of them running around. Whole lot of them running around. Yes, indeed. If you just got here today and you have not seen the whole video, trust me, go back to the beginning and you're going to see some Fleetman foreheads that you are not going to believe. But I'm telling y'all, they out there everywhere. And we are right here. And we've always been out here. And we're going to be out in D.C. family. And I cannot wait to see the family. We got a great list of speakers. Certified salute to our brother Tariq Nasheed and everybody who's going to be there. I cannot wait to see the fam. We're going to regulate, 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 and do some G-checking in the process, man. I cannot wait. And I want to tell you guys once again, thank you so, so, so dearly for recommending me and just putting my name out there, man. I'm so glad when I get on stage, I'm going to light it up. And I'm going to bring all that certified FBA energy and I'm going to bring all of you guys with me, man. I'm going to be thinking about every single one of y'all while I'm on there. And it's going to be a block party. But this time we're going to have all of our brothers with us, all of our sisters with us. The whole family going to be there. I want to see grandmothers there. There's nothing better 
than foundational black Americans being in the same place at the same time. There's nothing better than foundational black Americans being on code, on point and on game. And family, we have the opportunity. And what is going down is one of the biggest years ever. You're talking about election season. You're talking about we're on code. We're talking about regulating all the tethers. We done already rounded up about 30 tethers on this episode, put them all in the trash can, threw the trash can in the dumpster, and then toss that shit off a cliff. So y'all know in this generation, in this era, in particular this summer, oh man, it's on. Doesn't it feel like the car is getting gassed up? We done already wiped it down, polished it, and now we about to go and we got to stun on them. That's what it feels like right now. It feels like this generation and era, we've already been putting it down, but we about to put that final stamp on it. You can just feel it. There's something in the air. When you see certified brothers and sisters at the store walking down the street, you look at them in the eyes and we all got that look. We got that we not playing no more look. We got that we about to make history look. We got that you're going to F around and find out look. And I'm telling you now, when you got that and then you got the whole family together, and I'm going to be there with all of y'all in Washington, D.C. for the rally for reparations, Juneteenth celebration. It's going to be a day, family, that everybody remembers for the rest of our lives. But I'm telling you right now, there's children and children's children that are going to remember what we do on that day. And they're going to remember what we say. And they're going to remember every goal that we put out. And they're going to remember that we did it. And family, it all starts with us right now, going forward. Cannot wait to see you guys. Let's go there. Let's turn up. Let's shut it down. And let's stay certified when we do it, man. Dogs for life. That's how we are. FBA all day, man. Y'all have a good one, man. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the love every way. If you guys can, please donate. If you guys can, let me see your faces there. And let's go ahead and do what we do. Thorough, certified, all the time. Man, stay good, stay clean, man. I'm going to catch you guys back here next Tuesday. Let's go. Whoever else is on the G-Check list, we're going to write their name right on off, man. Yes, indeed. Stay good, stay healthy. I hope your family's good. I hope your mama, your daddy, I hope everybody's good. I wish you guys all health and prosperity for this next week, man. Let's go ahead and shut it down. Black Alpha Network, certified salute to the whole family, man. Love you guys with a passion. I'm going to let Tupac bring us all the way home. FBA all day for the win. Check. Jim, what y'all think? If you would ever fuck you think you are, until we own some shit, I'm going to call it like it is. How you going to be a man and we starving? Go ahead. You know? And we every you walk by five different houses, ain't a man in either one of them motherfuckers. How we going to be a man? How we going to be African?